Boo! Boo! Boo, guys! <laughs> Hello, good evening. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't forget. I didn't forget to mute. Thanks for uh, thanks for telling me. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> Hi, how's everybody's day? Today, I know you. I know usually um, I'll be more hyper and energetic. But I think today we should be like more chill for, for the for this game. Cause I think it's a it's a it's a it's a. I think might be sad. This game might be sad. So, yeah. So, but, but but we can still chat as as I as I read the thing. I uh, uh, this will be, I love um, so uh, I love vision novels and my favorite like vision novel is Otome, the romance kind, and um, <laughs> this is the first vision. Uh, this won't have romance though, but this will be my first uh vision novel, uh on the on the stream. And we'll see how it goes. If it ever, if I think it's like pretty good, then we might have more vision over next time. <laughs> so yes, guys, get comfy. I hope everyone had a good Thursday. Let me just click. Get comfy, and I'll be reading. I'll be real. Re I'll be reading Peel Kakatsia today. Pure Cricket Sia uh, is developed by uh, Arjun Games. And they're so nice. Uh, I'm not too sure if it's uh, Adrian or Nikita, but when I messaged them and asked whether I can stream the game, they were like, go ahead. They'll retweet me when uh, when I tweet about it. So they, they were super nice about it. And yes, okay, let me switch us there. Let me switch us, switch us to, the, to the game. Oh yeah, I paused the music. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. Look at me, I'm in the music room. But uh, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't listen to the other music. Cause I wanna hear like, I wanna, I wanna wait for them when, when the music actually play, in the. Ooh, what is that lag? Hold on, hold on. Let me let me let me check some stuff. Is the sound okay? Is it too loud? I think this is gonna be interesting. I think I can low like I think I can lower the BGM a little bit more. Yeah. Oh I, maybe I should read like the synopsis a little bit. So y'all have a idea of like where it's going. I know some people like to read the synopsis. Uh, so I think maybe here. Return. Does it say? Yeah. Okay, I think this is good. And uh, let me pull out my Steam and read the synopsis. Okay, so... The text for this vision novel is gothic, dark fantasy, dark and cute. <laughs> That's cute there. And yeah, it's under... The genre is casual. In this... And um... Okay, here's the overview. In this gothic story of deep, deep bonds and chilling mystery, a young girl named Esther ventures deep within a for forgotten forest. There, she seeks out a potential cure for her mysterious illness, a life leeching plague known as the Pale Cacaxia. But when Esther meets Sena, who lives all alone in the towering manor, the two girls are drawn to each other in a tale of friendship, sorrow, and bitter loneliness. Their story is shadowed by the dark sh secrets of the manor and its graveyard, which haunts Esther even in her deepest memories. Okay, so I believe this game, yeah, it's for 48,000 words. It's about four to five hours playtime. But because I'll be, I'll be reading out loud, so 
I'm not too sure if I'll take longer. I'll probably take longer. So it might be a two day stream. You're excited? I'm glad. I'm glad. Okay. I. Honestly, I I'm not co so confident <laughs> about re about my reading skills, and like sounding all nice and silky. But I'll I'll do my best. I, I mean I hope I hope maybe my love for Vision Nova makes up for it. Yeah. So okay, okay, okay. Let me close the Steam page. Never seen or play a Vision Nova before. Yeah, they're uh, it's they are really just like storybooks with the characters and the, there's like sound effects and music and for some of them uh, if they have like more money to work with then they they actually have voice actors so you don't uh so you don't need to like you, you can also just like listen along <laughs> and you, sometimes you don't even need to read because you can just listen to them say yeah but okay okay that's enough uh actually yeah I, actually i didn't delay that long so it's, it's only 906 okay <laughs> well I think all is good. I will begin. Let's begin, guys. Let uh let's read Pill Kaketsia. Start. Why is it black? Oh. Can you all hear it? Wait, let me see whether you can hear. Do you hear the birds chopping? Or is it too soft? <laughs> now I think maybe the audio is too low. Okay, okay, let's, let's, I will, I will just go on. I will go on for a while. A little soft, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. I will change it back. Gotta, gotta have the um, um, ambience. Can you can hear the birds? Can you hear the birds? How is it spiritual cells? Can you hear the birds? <laughs> can? Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. You tell me, you tell me if it's, if it's too, too loud or too soft. Okay. Whew. Oh, this should be Esther. Lonely. Strangely lonely. Those words surfaced in her mind as she gazed up towards the towering trees, their branches extending forever in all directions. They made her feel so small and insignificant. Like a frail leaf on the wind, at the mercy of wherever it took her. Lonely. There was no other way to describe this place. Oh. Ah, it's so pretty. Oh, 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 am I, am I, uh, is it too loud? <laughs> I'm looking. <laughs> oh, no, now you might be a little too loud. Hold on, hold on, guys. A little bit down. Think the music. Think the music a bit down. Is I? Is I? Go, go back again. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, all right. Just a little while earlier, she stepped out of her hired carriage, leaving the main road to explore these woods. Esther's driver had warned her that the forest was seldom visited. If she ran out of supplies, she'd have to walk back to the road on foot and hope to flat down a stagecoach heading to the city. And that forest is haunted, girl. Dangerous for anybody, let alone someone with the pail. I wouldn't hang there if I were you. And seeing as it's almost evening, I'll take you back to town for free. But she, but she refused the driver's offer. Turning away from her last hope, it was impossible. The decision would haunt her forever, a hanging mystery of what she might have discovered. No matter how isolated or helpless these vast woods made her feel, she promised herself she wouldn't leave without answers. A light breeze brushed past Esther's cheeks. It 
It carried the fragile scent of spring. Through a lingering, wintry chill still blanketed the forest. Spring always made her symptoms worse somehow. As everything gathered its energy to bloom and flower, her lethargy only seemed to become deeper and darker. The more vibrant Esther's surroundings grew, the more she felt her energy draining away. Some days, she barely had the strength to even move. And yet, she couldn't bring herself to hate the season. It hardly seemed fair to be angry at the world for turning its cycles, for life continuing on around her, just like it always had. Even now, she still remembered when spring was her very favourite time of all. Oh, my god, her eyes, she, she looked down. Hmm. Esther suddenly came to a halt. She felt a se- strange sensation under her boot. Had she, had she stepped on something just now? Bending down, she curiously patted the forest floor, searching for whatever it was. After a moment, her fingers brushed something small and cold. A, a key? What was a key doing out here, in the middle of nowhere? Puzzled, Esther turned the shiny, shimmering piece of metal over in her palm. Hey, Gerald! <laughs> Yeah, we, we have started reading. Yeah, this is still the beginning. We are following this girl as she uh, travel into this mysterious woods. I think she's looking for a cure. Yeah, so we'll see. No marks, symbols, or engravings. Welcome home, Gerald. It could have belonged to anyone or anything. After a long moment, she rose slowly back to her feet slipping the key into her skirt pocket. Perhaps it was a good omen. She had always had a hard time with superstition or questions of fate, preferring the calm logic of cause and effect to anything unseen. But these days, as the world's realities seemed to grow ever ever bleaker, Esther found herself hoping for something more. It didn't really matter whether things like omens or destiny were actually real. They made life a little less unforgiving. With a small flicker of hope in her heart, Esther turned to carry on once more. She had no map no directions and almost no clue as to what she was searching for. Only the faintest trail of a possible cure. Oh, she is looking for a cure! Oh. Oh. As the hours passed by, all sense of time was devoured by a sea of unending trees. The forest dreamy springtime vanished, faded to a go- vanished <laughs> springtime vanished, faded to a ghostly gloom. The cheerful bird song replaced by rustling crickets and distant ominous howls. Ah! A painful sting suddenly shot across Esther's arm. It yanked, it yanked her out of her absent-minded wandering, back into the oppressive emptiness of the forest. After a moment, she realised she walked too close to the brambles. Warm droplets oozed down her wrist, an uncomfortable reminder to always watch her step. She's so pretty! As Esther gazed down at the small, welling beads of blood on her flesh, her surprise began to shift into a sense of gnawing doubt. Perhaps she really had gone too far after all. If, if there really was anything or anyone within these woods, she would have stumbled across it by now. 
and if the rumors were false, just another folk tale, folk, folk tale made from anti hope, spinning more anti hope in a vicious cycle. Was all of this nothing but a dead end? Had her whole journey been pointless? Would she have to tell them she failed? Idiot, Esther muttered aloud, struck by a sudden sense of self-loathing. Those harsh thoughts could be dealt with later, but she couldn't keep stumbling through the darkness so pointlessly. Failure or not, it didn't change where she was now. <laughs> it's so weird how you never appear on my follow when I'm trying to find live channels. No, I'm not appearing. But thank you, Nizi, for coming by. Thank you. I hope you had a great Thursday. Come and chill and listen to me read the story. <laughs> uh, we are following Esther as she travels through the woods uh, to find a cure. She had a flint and steel in her sa sachet, along with a little water and rations. If she gathered some loose branches, at least she could make a fire to keep warm. It wasn't the first night Esther had spent alone in the middle of nowhere, and it surely wouldn't be the last. It's so pretty, oh my god. Slowly, cautiously, she crept through the thick underbrush. The moon's faint glow offered enough light for Esther to find a few branches long and dense enough for a campfire. But every time she crouched down to forage, her fingers searching through the cold damp earth, it felt like someone was breathing right behind her ear. Esther shook off the ghostly sensation with a deep shudder. It was just the odd old rumors she heard. They were finally getting under her skin. Foolish tales of primeval spirits guarding the forest, devouring the soul of anyone who ventured too deep. Of course, Esther never gave any credence to those stories, nor would anybody with common sense for that matter. Ghosts simply didn't exist. Still, the sooner she had a fire, the better. No. <laughs> At last, Esther spotted a clearing just beyond the trees. With her bundle of sharp branches crowded in her arms, she hurried out into the open, anxious to finally set up camp. But as she stepped into the glade and the shadows gave way to shapes, <gasps> she froze. There, right in front of her eyes, a beautiful aged house rose amidst the darkness. It stood like an elusive mirage in the desert, too perfect and out of place to be true. <sighs> Was it an illusion? Or, by some miracle, has she actually found the apothecary's estate? But surely the place was abandoned. It gave off an atmosphere far too lonely and desolate to be inhabited. Esther could barely discern any of its features, so thick were the shadows that shrouded the house's mountainous shape. A thick, swirling mist consumed the earth around its foundation, seeping across the ground like some poisonous cloud searching for intruders. Like its very presence was waiting to reject her. <sighs> this had to be it. A place that had evaded all maps, and yet she simply stumbled upon it. Something about that idea made a sense of deep apprehension crawl down her spine. In a trance between fear and fascination, she found herself moving across the clearing towards the manor's entrance. 
the pale mist seep around Esther's boots, swallowing her footsteps one by one. It felt like entering a dream, as if she were slowly crossing the threshold into a different reality. Until she realized that her fingertips were suddenly brushing cold metal. The handles for those foreboding doors loosely grasped beneath her uncertain trembling arm palms. Oh, she's so cute. Please. The soft, nearly inaudible word left her lips like a whispered prayer. Slowly, gingerly, the handles began to turn. Until, with a soft beckoning creak, the doors yawned open to allow Esther within. Inside the house, the scent of musty aged wood greeted her from the darkness. Just barely, Esther could make out the shape of a stairwell, illuminated by rays of moonlight. Something about it compelled her. Or perhaps it was simply less frightening than exploring past the pitch black archway ahead. After a hesitant pause, she closed the doors behind her. The wind had started howling faintly, causing an eerie echo through the manor's foyer. Slowly, Esther crept up the stairs, wincing at the small creeps that followed her movements. The second floor held a number of rooms, their doors all ominously closed. On a nervous whim, Esther decided to reach for the second door on the right, inching it open with bated breath. Ooh. The vacant room was... A, a study? As her eyes drifted across, around the dark space, she could see rows of shelves stuffed with books, a cluttered desk, tables full of dusty alchemy equipment. <gasps> a study! Esther's heart le leapt in her chest. Even though the apothecary was no longer here, what if... What if they've left some of their research behind? With the light of day, she could comb through these books and papers. Surely there had to be something of use in them. Maybe, just maybe, she had finally found a gleam of hope to cling into. Allowing herself a heavy sigh of relief, Esther closed the door behind her and stepped towards the small cot, cot nearby. Cold as it was, at least she had a roof over her head and a bed to spend the night on. As if on cue, she felt a wave of exhaustion, blanketing her mind. Maybe it was time to take her medicine and sleep. Even a few hours would be enough. <gasps> was that... A creak? Esther froze. Every inch of her body suddenly petrified. Creak. 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 Something was right outside the door. A chilling tightness gripped Esther's chest. She couldn't breathe. Every instinct in her body told her to stay utterly silent. Don't let it sense you. Don't get caught. Don't move. Don't. Without more warning, the door burst open. She had no choice but to look and see. Huh? Huh? Not a monster or a ghost. Only a young girl, trembling in obvious fright. Yeah. Who are you? Her fright slowly fading, the girl stared white eye at Esther, still shaking a little. She probably she <laughs> she probably been expecting to see a ghost too, and they end up scaring each other equally. Uh, 
I'm I'm Esther. E Esther, that that's your name. Esther nodded. And you are real. This this isn't a dream, is it? I don't know how many times Esther has, has used the three dots <laughs> But it's a lot of time <laughs> Dot 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 Oh! Hi Aish! Welcome to the stream We are reading a vision novel today Oh, you will sit back and enjoy How oh, you yeah, a great Thursday No, I don't think so Did she? She just joke about it <laughs> Hello, hi SP. Oh, that's so cute. From Shoto. Oh, Shoto's comfy emote. That's so cute. An awkward sil uh, silence followed their strange conversation. Hi, Kisara. Hi, hi everyone who's here. Thanks for, thanks for tuning into the stream. I'm reading a vision novel. And we are following Esther as she uh, ventured into the woods to find a cure. Yeah. I hope y'all had a great Thursday today. Tomorrow's a public holiday, so uh, I hope y'all can uh, <laughs> have a nice chill uh, Thursday night with me. <laughs> That's so cute. That's a cute cat face. Esther found herself wondering if maybe this actually was a dream after all. Really, it almost seemed too surreal to be anything else. She's so pretty. This girl is so, so cute. I mean, Esther is very pretty also. After a few moments, the girl's expression began to soften. She took a small, hesitant step towards Esther. Then another. And another. I, I can't believe it. Another person came here. A real girl right in front of me. This is so exciting. <laughs> Oh, Esther. Baffert, Esther gazed down at the delighted, warm face beaming up at her. My name's Sena. I'm so happy to meet you, Esther. <laughs> I was getting a drink from the well, so I didn't see or hear you come in. You must have thought that the house was empty, right? <laughs> I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to scare you, but I... Well... Sena let out a small, nervous laugh, toying with the ribbons on her dress. You're the first person I've seen in six years! I never expected to find someone else inside the house, especially not in this room! <gasps> had Esther hurt her, right? Sena had been living alone here for six years? Was it possible that she was the apothecary the rumors talked about? Oh! You you haven't eaten yet, have you, Esther? You look so tired and hungry. Gasping softly, Sena reached out to clasp Esther's hand between her tiny palms. I'll light the fireplace, and you can get warm while I make some supper. That sounds nice, right? Come, let's go downstairs. Uh, Alright. Taken aback by Sena's eager offer, Esther hesitantly nodded. Even though she wanted to ask what Sena knew ab about the cure, her stomach rumbled noisily at the top of a warm dinner. <laughs> yeah, I feel I know that feeling. It wouldn't hurt to wait until they have eaten. Surely. Oh. Still holding Esther's hand, Sena let her back her <laughs> Sena let her back downstairs and into the parlor. As soon as she had stuffed some wood into the fireplace and set it alight, the darkness suddenly lifted, melting into a cozy warmth thanks to the fire's cheerful crackling. Before she really knew what was happening, Esther found herself wrapped up in a power of blankets. <gasps> like, like me! I'm in, a, I'm in a blanket too, sitting on the couch be before the hearth. Half. Her? Sena seemed like a little blur of happy energy, fussing over Esther one moment, then hurrying back to the kitchen to check on her soup. 
clearly. She was delighted to have her visitor. Esther felt a little embarrassed and lost for how to deal with this unexpected kindness. Here we are! Eat it while it's warm! Before long, Sena was nudging a bowl of steaming soup into Esther's hands. Filled to the brim with brimly coloured vegetables and a dark broth, it had a delectable scent rich with herbs and spices. Thank, thank you. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to thank me. There's plenty more in the pot if you're still hungry, so don't be shy. Oh, that reminds me, I have to clean the stove before my lamp goes out. I'll be right back. And there she was gone again, her light footsteps pattering over the kitchen. As Esther gracefully ate her supper, she could see Sena's figure darting back and forth, <laughs> sipping a bowl of soup with one hand whilst she scrubbed the stove with her other. At first, Esther found it almost impossible to believe a small girl like Sena living by herself in the wilderness, taking care of the whole manor. But from the natural, precocious way she seemed to handle everything, it didn't take long to realize she was in her element. Most of the older girls and boys from the city wouldn't be able to last a week out here without access to any of the normal comforts they took for granted. And yet, even while she toyed to beat the dwindling landlight in her kitchen, Sena looked as contented as a buzzing bee in a field of flowers. Phew. A few minutes after Esther finished her, her meal, Sena wandered back into the parlor, wearing a satisfied smile. Kitchen is clean and you've eaten. I hope the fire got you nice and warm too. It did. Thank you. Thank you again for taking care of me. Oh, please don't worry about it, really, Esther. Actually... She gave a tiny, tiny sheepish laugh, her pale cheeks turning slightly pink. I already cleaned the stove yesterday, but I was so excited and nervous from meeting you that I had to calm down a little bit. Cleaning always makes me calmer, so I, I'm glad I have a big house like this. It always gives me lots to do. Oh wow. Oh wow, imagine cleaning as a hobby, guys. <laughs> oh, Esther Smart. I'm sure the house is glad to have you too. <laughs> I really hope so. Beaming brightly, Sena flopped down on the cushions beside Esther, dangling her legs over the sofa's edge. Another short, awkward pause soon followed. Sena fidgeted a little, staring at the fireplace intently, as if she were too shy to start up the conversation again. Oh. After a hesitant pause, Esther decided to finally break the silence. She had to ask the question that had burned in her mind from the moment they have met. Sena, are you the apothecary that lives in these woods? <gasps> Esther's words made Sena abruptly stiffen. Where did you hear about an apothecary? In one of the towns nearby. People said there was a hermit living out here, an apothecary who used to live in the city. Somebody who found a cure for the pale. All of Sena's cheerful energy seemed to slowly dissipate. Her gaze drifted down to the floor, lingering there as if anchored by a heavy weight. I'm sorry, Esther. The apothecary is not me. It's... Sena grabs the fabric of her dress, squeezing it tightly. It was my father. It's true that he had the pill, and he managed his symptoms for a while. But he died six years ago. <gasps> oh. 
And just like that, disappointment shattered Esther's heart. But even more acutely, she felt a sudden pang of sympathy, of sympathy for Xena. How it must have felt to lose her father so young, living all alone in this deep forest. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sena gave, gave her a small sad smile, gently shaking her head as if to reassure Esther it was alright. But she offered no other reply and stayed unusually silent, swallowing hard once or twice. I'll leave tomorrow morning then. There's no reason for me to cause you any more trouble. Oh, Sena. You, you could still stay here. <gasps> what? She stared at Sena in surprise, taken aback by the girl's sudden interjection. I mean, stay here to look at Papa's research. He has a lot of papers and books in his studies, and journals too. Although he told me he never, n he told me never to look at them. But Papa spent a lot of time working, and I know he took some notes about the pale. So if you stay and read through then, you might find something about the cure, right? Her voice quivered slightly. Sena turned to gaze at Esther with a hopeful, eager smile. Hmm. Thank you, but... I don't want to stay here and be a burden. Oh, Esther, you'll never be a burden. You barely ate anything. You're so quiet and kind, really. Why don't you stay? Oh, they're both? <laughs> oh. Esther gave her a hesitant look. As much as she wanted to accept Sena's kind offer, it just didn't seem right. I don't know, I just feel like both of them are lonely. After all, Sena obviously worked hard to take care of this place, but Esther didn't have any way to repay her hospitality. Thank you! I will hydrate. Eh. Oh yeah, let me let me get my bottle first. Thank you, thank you for the reading, Kisara. Oh. One more sip, one more sip. Mm. <sighs> oh. <laughs> Thank you, Kisara. Well, if you are going to be very stubborn about it, you can help out with chores during the day and look over Papa's research after. As if she easily guessed the source of Esther's reluctance, Sena gave her a reassuring cheerful nod. I have a lot of food and wood stored from winter still, anyway, so it's really fine. Please, don't worry about it. Mm. Esther studied Sena's expression, those shining eyes that were all but begging her to stay. At least if she help out with the work, she'll feel better about spending a week or two here. Even if it still shock her as taking advantage of Sena's loneliness. Oh, give me a moment. Give me a moment, guys. Let me code some stuff. Okay. I think there was some lag. It should be better now. Yes, Sally. Alright. <laughs> you are sure I won't be burdening you? Yeah, yes! <laughs> yes, I'm positively, absolutely! Uh, what? Halfway through her delighted cry, Sena suddenly cut herself off with a gasp. Oh, oh, I forgot! You, you have it, right? The pill. 
Oh. Esther nodded, puzzled at Sena's sudden question. Oh no! If they are friends, she's gonna lose another person to the pill again. Oh my gosh. I, I won't ask you to do any chores then. That wouldn't be fair. Papa told me how awful it always made him feel. He couldn't even get out of bed some days. It must be terrible. Being so drained all the time, no, no matter how much you rest. Oh my god. It's a... It's an illness that made you tired. Oh, that sucks. It's fine. I can work. Eh? But... To be honest, the longer I... The longer I don't do anything, the worse I feel. It's hard to push myself, but it's better than when I don't. Oh, It was Sina's turn to hesitate, but Esther offered a small, determined smile to reassure her it was alright. She hated when people pitied her or went easy on her. It bothered Esther even more than the symptoms themselves. If you're sure then, you know yourself better than I do, it's true. She giggled, clearly overjoyed that Esther had agreed not to leave. Then, it's a deal? You'll stay and go over Papa's research and help me out with work during the day? After a brief pause, Esther dipped her head in silent agreement. We'll start tomorrow then. <laughs> I'm so excited. I can show you the well, the gardens, the, the stream, the cemetery. We can pick flowers and have a picnic and read by the fireplace and... She choked off, biting her lid with a dawning look of embarrassment. Ah, uh, um, sorry. I get a bit carried away sometimes. It's alright. <laughs> For a long pause, they were both silent again. But the pause were warmer, was warmer, gentler, like one between friends. The fireplace, soft crackling echoed in the parlor, a comfort against the howling winds outside. Well, you're probably exhausted, aren't you? Why don't you sleep here by the fire? I can bring more blankets so you can have a good night's rest. I think I have enough blankets. Esther mumbled, still cocooned in the numerous wooly sheets Sena had wrapped around her earlier. You may say that now, but you can never have too many blankets. It gets quite drafty here at night. Huddling a little deeper into the warm covers, Esther offered Sena a small grateful smile. Oh. Well, if you need me for anything, my room is upstairs, right next to Papa's office. I'm quite tired too, so I think I'll head off to sleep. With a lengthy yawn, Sena stretched her arms over her head, then hop up to her feet. The darkness clouding her features earlier had all but vanished, and now she beamed as radiantly as the sun. Good night, Esther. I hope you have wonderful dreams. Good night, Sena. Thank you. Really. <laughs> she gave Esther a long, heartfelt smile. One that seemed wise and peaceful beyond her years somehow. After that last look, Sena finally turned away, her light footfalls pattering towards the stairs. Hey look, this the link is so fine. If you click, I will send you a gift. Oh god. Is that a bot? Oh! <laughs> Thank you, moderator. Thanks, Gerald. Nice try! <laughs> you won't be getting me. If my moderator are, are, is around, you won't be getting me! Cut Delhi 60 TR, you naughty. Esther Washer. <laughs> oh, we <laughs> Bye, Cut Delhi 60 TR. <laughs> Esther Washer go, listening in some. Uh, listening in something of a daze until she heard the bedroom door softly click shut. 
switches so slow. The past hour almost felt like a... It, it, and the past hour for us as well. The past hour almost felt like a dream itself. And Esther half expected to awaken by a shoddy campfire at any moment. Her hopes for finding a cure had been dashed, rekindled, dashed, and rekindled once more. And now she was reluctant to let her expectations run too high. She could stay here for a little while, going through the apothecary's research in search of any clues, but there was no guarantee she'll find anything of use. Still, it was the only thing she had to go on. And if there was a chance she wouldn't return home empty-handed, then it was worth giving a, it a try. And say nah. What a strange, remarkable girl. She survived out here alone for six years, suffered the death of her father, and yet somehow still remained as buoyant as a feather. Esther found it hard not to be deeply curious about her, and envious of all her whirlwind energy and excitement. Hey, opposites attract. It reminded her of a time, not so long ago. Bad when she used to be like Sena. Oh no! With a quiet sigh, Esther reached down into her sachet. Before she slept, there was one thing she had to do, just like every night. Slowly, Esther pulled out a fine silver pocket watch, its teen hands marking the time. Back when she pressed one of its buttons, the bag abruptly popped open revealing a tiny, glistening syringe. <laughs> Ow! With a practice motion, she jabbed the needle straight into her arm. It stung even more than usual. As the seconds passed, Esther watched her blood slowly filter up through the syringe into the watch's mechanisms. What? Then after a long few moments, the flow stopped and the blood reversed its course, oozing downward back into her body. <gasps> what? As it returned beneath Esther's flesh, a dark circle slowly spread around the pierced spot. <sighs> she kept her focus on the watch, watcher's face. Two, five, eight. The hour hand started swiveling forward. Ten, 14, 18, 24. Quick. The last drops pushed into her vein. Ow. Wincing, Esther put the needle free, closing the watch with a hasty squeeze of her palm. Hello. 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 <laughs> Hi, Naruto. Hello, how's your day? Tomorrow's a holiday. I'm reading a vision novel. Yeah, today's a chill stream and reading a vision novel. We are following this girl, Esther, and she got an illness and she's looking for a cure. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a good Thursday? This medicine of hers. A marvel of technology, they called it. But Esther hated the needle far more than drinking the normal to tonic. If only it was easier to bring the ingredients with her everywhere. Right now, she didn't have much choice beyond the watch, which injected a potent version of the remedy into her veins once a day. And yet, despite her reliance on the watch, or maybe because of it, Esther longed to be able to cast the twisted thing into a fire like the one before her now. Dropping the watch back into her sachet, she curled up tightly beneath her blankets. Oh, you have exams. All the best. After you finish exams, it'll be holiday. You can do it. The parlor felt colder and less cozy now that she was alone again. But as she closed her eyes, all of Esther's exhaustion caught up with her at once. 
weighing down on her body like a heavy sheet. Before long, the cracker of the fireplace lulled her to sleep, sheltered from the cold night outside. And all her restless thoughts gave way to a deep darkness. <gasps> and with that, we are done with the first night. Woo! Mm -mm. That was so weird. <clears throat> The, the the way she had to inject the thing was very interesting. <laughs> the blood like flowed out and then like and then I think the like the you the, the clock keep ticking. I'm not too sure if the clock reversed, but at, but like later on her blood like went back in. I guess with the with the potent uh uh medicine. Another day of rain. Not a strong storm, but a steady one, quietly smothering the house in a downpour that had seemingly lasted for weeks. Oh my god. Oh! It's a man. It's a guy. Oh! Dark, heavy drops sluggishly coursed down the window pane, forming jagged line patterns that soon dissolved into nothingness. Is this the father? It might be the father, right? Or is this person alive? I'm not too sure. His gaze followed their ambling paths. Oh no, he's alive. <laughs> Watching them aimlessly and without pleasure. But there was nothing else to look at. No impulse to pull him out of this empty staring and into something. Anything that would serve more of a purpose. How long had he been standing there? Bizarrely, he couldn't remember. Had it been minutes? Hours? Was it morning? Evening? How was it possible to tell when the clouds blurred all sense of light and time? It was only her occasional visits that separated the days for him. That soft, timid, infuriatingly insistent knocking. A reminder that she had left a tray of food outside his locked bedroom door. <gasps> Maybe it's someone with the pill. Always followed by an uncertain voice calling out for him. Then a long pause, before finally her soft footsteps padded away down the stairs. Little wretch. He whispered flatly to his reflection, which only stared back at him with grey irises. He had hoped himself in there, in here, to be away from both them and her. Away from her constant smiling, her laughter, that boundless energy that seemed to be mocking him for his pathetic state. That twisted, ungrateful creature. He should have believed his instincts about her from the very beginning. Oh no. Is, is, is he just... Is, is he... Is this, is he just selfish or is uh, Sena more than what meets the eyes? With an immense, painful effort, he pulled himself away from the window. Leaning on his splintered cane, the man staggered towards the bed, where he collapsed onto the sheets like a puppet with severed strings. As he curled into a fetal huddle and hugged his arms around his body, he ran his fingers across the sickly protrusion of ribs, pressing against his skin. Ooh, then he's skinny. Sharp bones contained by only a thin layer of flesh. Oh god, is he bleeding? What? Oh, if he held himself like this, he could feel the hard, slow, arrhythmic, ar arrhythmic, arrhythmic, beating of his heart. The tightness in his chest made it difficult to breathe deeply, and so his inhales were shallow and jagged. Was it anxiety? His health? Or worrying about his health that made his weak cage feel like it was always being crushed? He rolled over his right side, closing his eyes, 
trying desperately to ignore the uneven pounding in his chest. Oh. Trying to breathe deeply to calm himself down. To reassure him. To reassure himself that he still deserved to live. Oh, oh. Who is he? Will, will we find out? <gasps> oh. There's even an opening scene. Oh my god. Pale Kakatsia. This is Pale Kakatsia by Arjun Gaze. Now on the swing. Uh, not on, now, on the, now on Steam. <laughs> that skinny here. Ooh. Ooch. CG art by Lumi Ren. Oh no, I'm covering some stuff. Oh, it's, it's kind of long. Oh, no wonder she's holding a watch. Cause that's where like her shrink and her medicine is stored. Oh, I thought it was a, I thought it was a two man team. It was more than that. It was a, it was a lot of people's effort. A lovely smell, like herbs and flowers, sweet, delicate, and earthy. As Esther slowly falls her eyelids open, that pleasant scent greeted her with the morning sun. She blinked around in confusion. This unfamiliar place, was she dreaming? What kind of place has she woken up in? But as her mind dispelled its haze of s <laughs> and by as her mind dispelled its haze of sleep, the previous night's events came drifting back to her. The forest, the manor, Sena, all of it was real. Mm. <laughs> Esther dragged herself up into a sitting position, rubbing at her eyes with one hand. Then her gaze drifted down to the floor, where a small mark sat by her feet. Curious, she bent down to pick it up and realized she'd been smelling the fragrant tea inside. Oh! <laughs> After one sip of the warm drink, she felt instantly refreshed. It was like filling her lungs with cool, crisp morning air, a restorative that washed through and cleansed her system. Is it really alright to ask her that? Oh, oh, who is this talking? I don't want to push her. She just looks so tired. Ah, uh, I don't know. A soft muttering caught Esther's attention. Glancing over her shoulder, she saw Sena sweeping the floor with a thoughtful expression, lost in whatever she was contemplating. If only you didn't hate visitors, Papa. I really could have used your advice. Sena shook her head, sighing wistfully. I'm guessing the vo volume is fine, right? Let me see. Ah, yeah, I think it's fine. That was quick! What was quick? Oh! He awake! The plot twist already? Wait, there was a plot twist? Wait, what? Did they do something with visitors? Also <laughs> Suddenly noticing Esther's gaze, she let out a soft gasp and hurried over to the couch, her features quickly brightening into a smile. 
with both her hands, Sena clutched a broom that had to be twice her size, although she didn't look encumbered by it at all. Hello, Sena. Thank you for the tea. Oh, it's nothing. I hope it hasn't gone to, gotten too cold. I can make a fresh pot if you like. It's fine. Oh, it's, it's, it's Esther. It's, it's fine. You don't have to do that. Ah. You, you don't like other people doing things for you, do you, Esther? I'm sorry. I'll try to be better about it. Esther averted her gaze. Somewhat embarrassed by Sena's keen observation and apology. Have you been cleaning since you got up? I didn't hear you at all. Clearing her throat, she swiftly changed the subject. Yes, I have! There's a lot to be cleaned in this big lovely house, so I need to do a little every morning and evening. <gasps> She's a role model, guys. You must clean really well. It's like there's a maid living here. <laughs> oh, really? A happy flush rose to Sena's cheeks and she bounced on her toes a little. Well, it's not a chore or anything. I love cleaning, actually. Oh, I wish I loved cleaning. <laughs> Papa, actually, Papa worked really hard to repair the house and make it prepared. It was a lot easier to clean when he was here though. Some of the rooms are a little run down and I don't use them, so I don't dust those as much. But I try my best to keep, take care of the others, even if it's not perfect. Her smile wilted slightly, as if she were disappointed in herself for not keeping the entire house pristine. It's still amazing. Even if I loved cleaning, I couldn't care for this whole place alone. Of course you could, Esther! Sena responded without missing a bit, giving a determined nod and tapping her broom on the floor. Anyone can do anything. Anything they really want to do, that is. They just have to figure out what way is best for them. The other girl's confidence caught Esther off guard. She didn't seem to have a single cynical bone in her entire body. Ah! But anyway, I do hope you slept well. I'm sure you must have been very tired. I could see it in your eyes. They were so shadowed. A hint of concern crept into Sena's voice as she studied Esther's face closely. You do look a little better today though. Not as gloomy. After you finish your tea, shall we go take care of the grounds together? If you are feeling up to it, I mean. I am. Yes. And it's the least I could do to repay you. Esther. Sena seemed like she was about to remind her that there was no need to repay anything, and Esther was taking this all far too seriously. Esther was quite used to hearing that response, despite the fact that nobody ever seemed to really mean it. Mm. Whatever makes you the most happy, that's what a good hostess would say, I think. Just don't overwork yourself, okay? I feel like you're stubborn enough to keep going until you faint. Alright. After beaming at Esther encouragingly, Sina hoisted her broom up and cleared her throat. <clears throat> Alright, I'll go finish clean, uh, sweeping the kitchen while you drink your tea, then we'll go out. Oh, it's such a lovely day. I can't wait to show you around. <laughs> I'm so excited. <clears throat> With a delighted sigh, she rushed over towards the kitchen, her broom swirling across the floor in a flurry of motion. What a peculiar girl she was. Maybe it was to be expected, considering she lived all alone for so long. Nobody was forcing her to try and fit in with normal society. For that reason, Esther couldn't really get a grasp on her behaviour or her personality. And that made her all the more curious about the story behind Sena's unusual situation. I 
After she finished her tea, Esther made her way to the manor's entrance. Sena, who was already eagerly waiting for her, led the way out into the fresh morning air. As Esther's gaze drifted out to the, towards the radiant blue sky, it almost felt like she'd been transported to a different forest. The dark, oppressive atmosphere of the previous night had vanished, transforming once more into a fairy tale shimmer. And with Sena's company, the woods didn't seem quite so vast and daunting, or as lonely for that matter. Alright, we're off to the well first. Reaching down beside the front door, Sena picked up two buckets from beneath a protective cloth. Although both were decently sized, one was smaller, looked less professionally made as if an um, amateur had crafted it. <laughs> After a brief pause, Sena held the larger bucket out to Esther. In that moment of hesitation, her gaze misted over with a distant look. Shall we? She reached out to take Esther's free hand with her own, holding it gently. Oops. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, so that's the... <laughs> it seemed like a subconscious movement, as if Sena haven't even realised she had done it. Probably with her... Papa? <laughs> the sudden warmth of those lightly callous fingers caught Esther off guard. Normally, she, she always disliked being touched. But curiously enough, Sena's delicate grass didn't give her the same sense of discomfort. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> Sina gave her a small, soft con gave her a soft contented smile, although it seemed more melancholy than usual. An unexpected sadness briefly tugged at Esther's chest, and she had the odd sense she had glimpsed something she shouldn't have. She probably like went like to the well with her dad also. Hand in hand, they wandered across the manor grounds, heading for the well out by the garden. Neither of them spoke. Only the sound of so bird song and their light footsteps in the leaves filled in the air. It seemed strange for Sena to be so quiet, but Esther was a little relieved. She didn't feel any pressure to speak. Briefly, she wondered if Sena had completely lost herself in thought, perhaps even forgetting Esther's presence. But as if she could somehow read Esther's mind, Sena glanced over towards her. The smile on her face had grown contented once more, most traces of sadness drying up beneath the warm sunlight. As they stepped up to the well, Sena came to a halt. I'll let you go first if you if you like. She turned to look at Esther expectantly, tilting her head to one side. <laughs> Esther is always dot dot dot. <laughs> Nodding, Esther turned towards the well, scanning over it hastily. It had to be quite simple, surely. All she needed was to tie the rope to the bucket. That was it, right? Surely she could just lower it down afterwards? She wasn't very good at tying knots though. What if it couldn't hold the water's weight and she lost Sena's bucket down the well? Oh no. Esther realised the other girl was watching her closely, eyes widening in realisation. Have you ever drawn water from a well, Esther? Mm. Stricken with a sudden sense of self-consciousness, Esther shook her head. It seemed like such a basic thing to do, and yet, she never really had the chance. Really? But how do you get water? We have a water pump. The servants are normally the ones who use it. 
As Esther spoke, she started feeling more and more sheepish. Talking about servants made her sound so privileged and haughty. She hoped Sena wouldn't think less of her for it. Ah, so the water comes right to you and you have servants fetch it so you don't even have to do any work? That sounds amazing. You must be something like a princess or a noble. She studied Sena for a moment, trying to tell if she was being teased. But the other girl just peered up at her with wonder and curiosity, her gaze sparkling excitedly. I'm not a princess. A lot of people in my city have servants. We only keep a few, but some families have dozens. Wow. Dozens! Ah! As if trying to imagine such a thing, Sina closed her eyes, letting out an envious sigh. There must be so much more to the city than what Papa told me. It's like another world or something, isn't it? For some reason, that thought made Esther feel a little crestfallen. Well, even if you were a princess, I don't think it would matter. Her focus returning to Esther, Sena put on a bright confident smile, like she had suddenly come to a realization about something. As long as I know where you come from and you know where I come from, we should be able to understand each other easily, right? And it makes me really happy to hear you talk about your home. Even if I know I'll never fit in there. <laughs> the warmth of Sena's smile was contagious. Even if she doubted the other girl's words, they put Esther slightly more at ease. Sena didn't seem like she'll ever judge her for not knowing something. I don't think you'll like the city since it's not a very nice place, but it's all I've ever known. Oh, I'm sure it can't be that bad. Both you and Papa come from cities after all, so there have to be some good people there. She punctuated her words with a confident nod, unfazed by Esther's hesitance. Anyway, shall we fetch some water? I'll go first so I can show you the best way to tie the knot. Here, just like this. Esther watched as Sena secured the rope to her bucket, lowering it down with the winch until it splashed into the water. Afterwards, when she mimicked Sena's nod with her own larger bucket, Esther felt a wave of relief when they managed to make the, the return journey. Her smaller companion seemed chilled too, even if it was a, even if it was an unremarkable feat. Perhaps she was just excited to impart her knowledge. Buckets in hand, they set off towards the gardens. Water, che water cheerfully splashing with each step. Despite Sena's small frame, she carried her full bucket with little effort. Years of solitary labor must have given her strength that belied her size. Oh yes, yes, I, I can confirm. Housewives are, are very, very strong. They are super, super strong. My mother is a trooper. <laughs> Esther felt her arms already getting slightly sore from the heavy weight, but she made a determined effort not to show any trace of discomfort in front of Sena. Here we are, Esther. My garden. What do you think? As they came to a stop among the rows of neatly planted crops, Sina swiveled around to look up at Esther Ginger, uh, eagerly. <laughs> I, I can't believe you do all of this alone. It's so pretty. Uh, oops, it's so pretty and well kept. Oh, <gasps> look at her blush. She's, she's proud of her work. She's proud of her, her chores. And she loves her chores. You, you really think so? 
Esther nodded, her gaze drifting across the diverse, meticulously cared for vegetables and leaf leafy greens with admiration. Well, actually, Papa was the one who made the first garden patch here. He wanted to leave off what he could grow and forage for himself because he hated relying on other people. I only saw him visit the city a few times a year. He taught me how to do everything by myself too. Well, not everything, but he did write an almanac and a foraging book. And he made them really easy to understand, just for me. So as long as the earth is still alive, I know I'll be alright. <laughs> Humming contently to herself, Sena led the way over to a large watering can that sat near a row of peas. Once she emptied her bucket into the can, she traded the empty vessel with Esther a convenient way to hold pluck weeds. Luckily for Esther, weeding wasn't a task that needed much instruction. It didn't take long for them to settle into a comfortable place together, with Sena watering and fussing over her crops while Esther pulled out unwanted sprouts. I realized I've never weeded. I've oh, yes. I was just gonna say, I think I never saw weeds. I've never seen weeds before, but I'm guessing it's still like very ugly grass. <laughs> Although gardening had never really appealed to her before, it surprised Esther how relaxing it was to work with her hands like this. Working side by side helped diminish the awkwardness that still lingered between them as well eh, <laughs> they still lingered between them as well and before long Esther felt comfortable enough to break the silence with a question remember um, my mom used to do a lot of gardening <laughs> I, uh, the last time I tried to plant something it, it died it died like within like two weeks so too bad green thumbs are not um, inheritable sad do you ever get nervous when it grows colder? In case there isn't enough food to last you until spring, I mean. Oh no, not really. Some plants grow all the way through winter and things like potatoes will last for a while in my pantry. You can dry out berries and mushrooms and nuts are always good too. There are a lot, of, a lot growing around here so I never run out of those. Motioning towards some shrubs at the edge of the clearing, Sena hefted her, her watering can with a light grunt before she continued. Actually, I think it's quite fun when a new season comes along. It means that I can plant new foods and make new recipes. I'll really miss winter if it never came, even if the house does get icy cold. Icy cold? Isn't it cozy by the fireplace as long as you're covered in blankets? It's a little bit jutty still, but with some hot tea, it's perfect. Oh, that reminds me. I have to show you my winter recipe book sometime. I'm making a new spring one since I've been trying a lot of different things and there are really so many amazing combinations you can have with just... <laughs> there she goes. Oh my god, storytelling shrink. Yes, story reading shrink. Welcome, Fro, welcome. I hope you had a great Thursday. We're following Esther, who has a, who has a illness called the pill, and she met this girl while trying to find the cure. With a small smile warming her face, Esther listened as Sena began recounting tales of her recent cooking and foraging uh, adventures. It felt so calm and comfortable somehow. Perhaps Sena had noticed how little Esther liked to speak, so instead of asking too many questions, she lightly chatted away about letters and peas, her voice filling the silence like the bubbling of a shrimp. Bubbling of a shrimp? Like tweet shrimp? 
After they finished weeding and watering, they brought their empty pails and a few small showers to venture outside the clearing. Eager to share her knowledge, Sena guided Esther to the best foraging spot she found, pointing out which berries, nuts and wild greens were best together. The more that Esther learned, the less harsh and daunting the forest appeared. Surviving in the wild always struck her as a daunting task, but Sena's simple, cheerful explanations made it seem like something anyone could have accomplished, as long as they put in enough effort. None of this seemed like work for Sena either. It was almost like they were just playing together instead. Esther couldn't help but envy her energy and enthusiasm, the way she managed to take so much joy from everything. And yet, at certain moments, there was something unusually determined and purposeful about her effervescent happiness. As if it were another matter of survival, just like her gardening or foraging were. Oh, it might, it might. I mean, you know, like some animals can die of sadness. Ah. The sun's so bright today. Oh look, it's already a bit past middays. Time's been flying much faster than it normally does. All this work made me really hungry. Are you hungry, Esther? A little bit. She forced her words to sound nonchalant, but in reality, Esther was just as famished. Normally, she had to force herself to eat or simply forget about it at all. For, 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 or simply forgot about it at all. But not today. Is that your stomach growling? Uh, no, it was probably just the wind. Oh, alright then. Well, if you wait for me on the little lock near the garden, I'll bring back some food for us. I'll just be a few minutes. Prone it. I promise. Mew there! Twirling around, she bounded off in the direction of the manor, her hair fluttering wildly in the wind. Her constant energy never failed to amaze Esther. Already, she could feel a familiar deep fatigue weighing on her shoulders, as much as Sena's presence helped distract her from it. But she was determined not to succumb to the feeling today. There was too much left for her to do. Wait, let me check something. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Following Sena's footsteps back towards the clearing, Esther made her way towards the fallen log near the garden patch. Then you go toilets. <laughs> Let me, uh, maybe, maybe when Sena's back, I will go to the toilet. Yes, yes. Before long, Sena's a small figure. Oh, oh, yes, she's back. Sena's small figure trotted back into view. A little splash of white and pink fit, flitting across the grass. After stopping briefly at the well, she approached Esther's chosen picnic spot with careful steps, balancing two bowls on one arm. Oh, wow, she's like a waitress whilst carrying, carrying a bucket of fresh water in the other. Okay, toilet time. BRB. Hoi.
<laughs> Chair stream. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, like I'm, I'm reading, and then I'm like, I'm, I feel, I feel like, like, um, like reading like a bedtime story. But then I'm not a very good reader because I keep tripping my words. <laughs> WTF, who is this girl blocking the view of my chair? She <laughs> God damn it, it's blocking my favorite streamer. <laughs> Nista, Nista, secret lab chair. But yes, um, I was saying, like, uh, I feel like I'm like reading like a uh, bedtime story. And I'm just thinking, like, wait, do like, you know, like when parents read a uh, bedtime? Wait, did. I, I mean, because my parents aren't like literate, so like they didn't read me any, I guess. My sister did read me some books though. Um, but do y'all, did any of y'all have like siblings or family or friends that read your stories when y'all were young? Yeah, I never had bedtime stories. Uh, it's like, like if like I'll talk in debate and then like someone read me a story. Whenever I asked my dad to read me a sorry book, he told me to read it myself. <laughs> that's such a dad thing to do. You know what? If I if I'm a mom, right, that's what I'll say. I like, go read it yourself. <laughs> but uh, there's there's something pretty cute is that I remember from like back then when I was young. Um, can you believe it that um, my Chinese. I mean, uh, let me think. Yeah, my Chinese wasn't very good. I mean, it's still not good even now. So like, but I like to borrow, uh, buy like the manga, Chinese uh, comics uh, from the stores in Malaysia. Then I will like, ask my sister to read it for me because I can't read it. And then like, they'll read, they'll read it and then we'll, I'll look at the pictures and all that. It's so cute. It's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, my, my language proficiency is kind of scuffed Cause like When I uh, uh, My mom and dad are mostly uh, They speak Chinese So at first, my Chinese was better than my English Then So I took like English uh, lessons and whatnot Then um, the I guess I used a lot more English in school So like I became more comfortable with using English and I think in general Singapore became more uh, use more English in general especially our generation so we ended I ended up having a better English proficiency than Chinese it's okay you're less than perfect you're less than perfect English as the other child oh thank you thank you bro uh, 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 wait do I really thank you <laughs> I think like um, uh, I think some of like the sentences are like like perfect English, right? So, <laughs> so when I read them, I'm like I'm like oh, I, I feel a bit weird, <laughs> cause my English is very less than perfect. It's, I'll never forget the day I hear you pronounce Mashiti. Yeah, oh yeah, we're playing Ralph that day. That weapon is good. It deals a lot of damage. One hits the, the shark. <laughs> also, I was like... Okay, let me see. Okay, we can take a break a little bit longer. I was uh, setting up the lights. And then I was like thinking, I, I feel like my lights are a little bit dimmer today. And also, I don't know, I'm reading... Reading to you guys, I feel like it should make you guys like sleepy. But it's making me sleepy. <laughs> it's... It, it does does read I wonder if reading like bedtime stories make like the parents who are reading the stories sleepy. Probably right. Cause if no, but then again they usually read and then like they get the child to go to sleep. Then they continue like watching TV or something. <clears throat> but yeah. But I hope y'all enjoying the story so far. Uh I, do y'all think Sena is a imposter? I'm pretty sure this 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 story should be a bit. I think it should be about friendship. So I don't think. I think I think we are safe to trust the the girls. 
the guy though, the guy though, we don't know what what's up with him. And I'm quite curious how he relates to uh, Sena. I'm so sorry, I'm late. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Uh, it's okay, Ichibuta. I'm, I'm, today I'm uh, reading a vision novel. So you can just tune in and chill. I have school work to do, all the best at work. Yeah, I'll probably be replying lesser because I'll be reading the vision novel. Okay. Mm, stretch a bit. But I hope you had a good Thursday. Uh, tomorrow's a public holiday for, for us in Singapore. I hope you have a public holiday too. Good, good Friday? Do you all have good Friday? Tomorrow's good Friday for us, so you get the day off. So yeah, today, uh, today, today, yet yeah. after after work, I was like, yes! Tomorrow's an off day. So happy. Okay. Yeah, let me stand up. Maybe I should get supper. Supper sounds good, guys. Maybe later. Okay. Whenever Singapore have a public holiday, we don't my work gets a little. <laughs> I see. All the best. All the, you can do it, bro. Oh, I didn't know that it is not the public holiday in Malaysia. I didn't know. Actually, I don't know the origins of Good Friday. Is it a Singapore thing? I might need to do some research later. Okay. Anyways. For those tuning in right now, um, <laughs> I don't know how many times I, I repeated this for those that <laughs> have been watching for a while. I hope you don't mind. Uh, I'll... <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> isn't, isn't Good Friday a Christian thing? Oh, it is! I think you're right, bro. I just realized my blood are coming out from the speaker. Hopefully y'all don't hear double. Yes, but anyways, we have uh, this vision novel. We are following a girl called Esther who has an illness called the pale. And she met Sena while finding a cure for for her illness. Yeah, and right now, right now, Sena. Um, What's that smell? You smell that? It smells like, like a fucking weeb. I, I, I see that someone has a lot of points. <laughs> I see that someone has a lot of points. <laughs> you, you saved up. You, uh, how do you get so many? Oh, I guess FOMO gave you 300 and, and you stayed throughout the... Oh, okay. <laughs> is, that all, the, is that all of your points? <laughs> Alright, okay. Where was I? Sena? Sena? Yes, but uh, I think yeah. So, so Sina offered uh for Esther to stay in the house, and do chores, and in return Esther can look at the past research that that Sina's father once did about the pill. Okay, so let's continue now. We had a good break and a good chat. Here we are. I just made something small and quick, but it should give us enough energy to finish today's chores. Beaming proudly, she offered Esther one of the bowls. It held a hearty salad topped with lentils and various seeds, a red berry glaze glistening on the leaves. Tucked into each bowl was a generous slice of warm bread, lightly toasted from the stove. Thank you. It looks delicious. Wait, what? Oh, okay. I thought she didn't like veggies. I it's, it's really nothing. But my baby lettuces will be so happy to hear that. They always like a bit of encouragement. <laughs> oh yeah, there was like a research where they say like, if you talk, you say nice thing to the plants, the plants will grow better. You talk to your lettuces? Mm-hmm. I usually chatter with all my plants. They were the only friends I really had before you came here. Oh. With that slightly quieter, more subdued statement, Sina settled down beside her on the log. At first, Esther felt slightly awkward, caught in the wake of Sina's earnest words with no idea how to reply. But once the smaller girl took a bite of the salad and started to munch away, Esther followed suit. 
her mood instantly lifting from the sweet berry flavour that filled her mouth. Oh, salad does sounds good. They took turns using a ladder to sip the water Sena brought. Its crease coolness as refreshing as the morning breeze. There's so much background art in this, so pretty. Although they didn't exchange any words while eating, the atmosphere between them gradually settled into something calm and comfortable. Now and then, Sena would glance over at Esther, offering a little smile as soon as they made eye contact. She seemed happy just to be able to share a meal together. In a way, Esther could understand why. Normally, she preferred to eat alone. Other people made her feel self-conscious about her shyness or the way she ate her food. <gasps> I know, I feel her. I do get self-conscious too. But somehow, Sena's quiet company didn't bother her. Now that they were a little more familiar with each other, perhaps the other girl didn't feel like she needed to constantly feel the silence all the time. Are y'all the type to feel the silence or are y'all the type to stay quiet? <laughs> Once they finished eating, the two girls made a brief return to the manor. Despite Sena's protest, Esther stubbornly insisted on washing up their dishes. Refused, her pride refused to let the younger girl handle everything, even if Sena was probably far more capable at it. You know, always, always, always help with the dishes. Even if they say no. Unless they really, really, really say no. <laughs> but always help with the dishes. Here you are, Esther! When they reunited outside, Sena handed her a large sturdy broom, even bigger than the one she had been using earlier. Just like with the buckets, she held a second broom that was smaller and more suited to her size. Would she be okay? The broom was far heavier than Esther expected. It had a slight it had the slightly dusty preserved look of something that had sat unused for years, but haven't been forgotten. Oh, it's probably a broom that her dad used. <laughs> ah. I know we've already done a lot today, so if you need to rest, just tell me, please. Thank you. But I'm fine. I can keep working. Alright, but you can always start wherever you need to. Through Sena's gentle smile, Esther thought she could detect a hint of worry. Oopsie. It was more than a little unexpected, considering they had only just met each other yesterday. The place we are heading is a few minutes' walk from the manor. Let's go, shall we? Motioning for Esther to follow, Sena set off eagerly into the woods. Her excitement must have hastened her steps, for Esther suddenly had trouble keeping up with her li lively pace. They hurried along a slender winding path, and the manor's statue school <laughs> presence soon disappeared among the branches. Once it did, Esther found herself swiftly losing all sense of direction among the sea of vibrant leaves. She was thoroughly glad she had Sena to guide her. Otherwise, it seemed likely, unlikely she would ever find her way back. A short while later, they emerged into a less densely wooded area. At first, Esther thought she was imagining things. But when she looked more closely, she realised she was seeing exactly what she thought. Why is it? Why is it? Oh, cemeteries. A serene, beautiful graveyard. Captured in the golden sunlight like a forgotten relic lost to time. 
rows upon rows of headstones stood between the trees, each one a different shape and size. But despite their obvious age and the fact that they were nested in the woods instead of a proper clearing, every grave looked incredibly clean. Oh my god, did she clean every one? It gave the cemetery a strange ethereal atmosphere with the same awe and reverence that surrounded mythical artifacts in the museum. Not far in the distance, a large mausoleum rose upon the shore of the graveyard's pond, casting a sombre reflection across the water. It caught Esther's eyes, and for a moment she found herself mesmerized by its towering presence. Are you looking at the mausoleum? It's locked, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I've looked, I've looked all over the manor and the grounds, but I don't think I've, I'll ever find the key. Papa must have lost it. Sena offered a small, wistful smile, shaking her head. Esther pulled her focus back to the other girl, blinking. It felt like something strange had come over her briefly, but she had no idea what it was. Why do you tend to this place so closely? Is your... Is anyone you know buried here? No, I don't know any of them. To Esther's surprise, Sena's shook her head. It seemed far too insensitive to ask where Sena's father was buried if he wasn't in the graveyard. So Esther bit her lip and let the other girl continue. Actually, I don't really know who, who's buried here. Papa didn't give me much of an answer. But since this manor belonged to his family, the cemetery is probably for old relatives. All of the graves seem like they've been here for a very long time. As her gaze drifted across the headstones, Sena's expression grew a little more distant again. I don't know why, but I've always been drawn here. Ever since I was a little girl, it feels so peaceful, lonely but peaceful, and comforting in a strange way. Like a place that will always be here, always the same, as long as I take care of it. Her words trailed off slowly, ending in a little more than a whisper that faded into the breeze. But only a few lingering seconds passed before Sina seemed to catch herself, blinking and restoring a brighter face. <laughs> the brighter smile to her face. Well, let me show you what I usually do here. It's an easy chore and very calming. I think you'll like it. It was impossible to just ignore the brief moments that came over Sina but it seemed like she wasn't aware of Esther's presence at all. But then again, after being alone for so long, it was only natural that she would fall back into her own thoughts now and then. I'm ready. With this broom, sweeping is involved somehow, I assume. It is! What a clever guess. Come, come. I always start over here in the northwest patch. Gently taking Esther's hand, Sena led her over to the first row of graves. She demonstrated how she cleared each headstone of stray leaves and surrounding weeds, and once or twice a week, picked little bunches of flowers to rest beside the markers. Like Sena had said before, the task was easy and calming. Despite her initial hesitance, Esther soon found herself enjoying how peaceful the cemetery felt and honouring the date certainly seemed like a worthwhile effort. Yet, despite the soothing lull in thoughts it afforded her and the secluded beauty that surrounded them, Esther couldn't shake a sense of uneasiness that tingled at the nape of her neck. A sense that they were not alone in the cemetery. It was completely irrational 
and she couldn't explain it no matter how hard she tried. But even in the daytime, with the sun's gentle afternoon rays filtering through the trees, something about the graveyard's shadows struck her as peculiarly haunting. <gasps> Are they ghosts? Or is it the guy? Might be the guy. As evening began to slowly settle over the forest, the two girls made their way back to the manor. Despite her tiredness, Esther's heart leapt at the prospect of finally beginning her research once they arrived. And true to her promise, Sina took Esther straight up to her father's study. By the time they arrive, however, the towering bookshelves block out most of the remaining sunlight, so they had to fetch a few candles to elevate the gloom. According to Sena, she used such light sources sparingly, as non-wood fuel was difficult to stockpile. Luckily, there were a few types of shrubs and trees in the forest that she could extract wax from, as well as seeds and nuts that could be crushed for oil. But since Esther was a special guest, Sena reassured her that she could light as many candles as she needed during her stay. Oh, it's lighter out now. Ah, it feels like so long since I've seen any candlelight in this room. Well, it has been quite long, I suppose. The last time was when Papa was still around. Setting a newly lit candle down on the desk, Sena let out a quiet sigh. Sena, your father. I've been meaning to ask, what was his name? Oh, his name was Isaiah. It's so strange to say it out loud since I never called him that. I only heard someone use his name once, back when I was very small. She fiddled with the hem of her dress, her gaze drifting away from Esther's. Ah, I'm sorry about the mess in here. All these loose papers will probably make it hard for you to find what you're looking for. Papa never liked to throw things away. Oh, it's just like me. Especially not his letters. Not even his little scribbles or notes. You can read any of them you like. Bye. Well, Papa always told me not to peep at his writing, so even now I try to leave them as they are. You'll probably think I'm very silly for it, I'm sure. I can help you with anything else though. Would you like me to sort out the books, maybe? No. It's alright. You've been very kind to me already. I don't want to push you any further. Her words were quiet and gentle, but firm. She didn't want to take advantage of Sena's generosity. And although she had never mentioned it directly, Esther also needed some time alone. Ah. Alright then. I'll leave you to it. If you need me, I'll be in the kitchen fixing up dinner. You can come down wherever you're ready. Beaming at Esther encouragingly, she turned towards the door, lifting her hand in a little wave. Good luck! My voice broke a little there. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my god, the, the, the music suddenly became like more eerie. <clears throat> As Sena's presence faded away, the study's atmosphere steadily began to shift. A dark green cloud of memory seemed to hang over the room, spectres of unending nights of restless sleep. Although Esther couldn't pinpoint exactly why, she had a distinct sense that this chamber belonged to a deeply troubled mind. Man, imagine researching to cure your own illness. Clutching a candle in one hand, she started to scan around the shelves, her eyes flicking tr across the numerous titles. Sena was right. Her father really had collected a staggering assortment of books. 
but as she glanced over the various titles before her, Esther noticed something unusual. Despite Isaiah's obvious focus on alchemy, there seemed to be almost as many books on ghosts and spirits, and a number of tre- treatises on the supernatural. Oh no, were they related to his search for a cure at all? Or was there, for s- or was there some reason for his apparent obsession? Esther couldn't understand how ghosts might be related to the pill, so maybe he simply found that interesting to research. Still, the anomaly stuck out in her mind, leaving her with a nagging set of questions. As she opened up a large book on biology, suddenly a loose leaf of parchment fluttered out. Esther bent down to Esther bent down to pick it up, turning the aged paper over in her hands. It looked like a journal entry, but there was no date to be found. Oh! Jesus! You scared me! <laughs> hey! We're in an enclosed room in stinky! <laughs> Curiously squinting at the messy script, Esther brought it over to the nearest lamp and began to read. Oh. Seven days have passed since Amaraf left me. Three days since Jeremiah told me he saw her with another man, her previous husband, now miraculously returned from his absence. I cannot eat. I cannot sleep. My heart bounds with many energy between rage and this crushing sense of abandonment. In the depths of my darkest moods, I look back on the long months of her pregnancy, months that I spent on carpentry, furnishing, cleaning, planting, remaking this dusty tomb of an estate into a family manor. All for her, all because she could never stand life in the dreadful city. And where is she now? Back in his chambers, no doubt, embracing him in the darkness so that she might hide the shameful stretch marks of her maternity. Damn her, that sicko, sycophantic wretch. Damn her and her lecherous, adulterous bastard of her husband. Oh, how I used to wonder what such a beautiful soul as her might have seen in the ways of flesh like him, but now, with the veil lifted from my eyes, I finally understand. They are alike, two souls perfectly matched in their shallowness and fickle attentions. What a ridiculous fool I was, ever believing that she might come to truly care for a penniless researcher, one with nothing to offer her but himself. And now what am I left with? A small child, and no mother to raise it. An old family home and no family to fill its many chambers. A retirement from my life in med- medicine without anything worthy left to retire for. No, I refuse. I refuse to let her triumph over me. I will remain here, away from that toxic conurbation, isolated among the fruits of my sweat and labour. With this foundation I have laid in the land, I know I can survive solely by myself, without recourse to the city's indulgent pleasures. Here, amidst my tones and papers, I will press onward in my research, towards the last and most important focus of my life, a cure for this disease. And as for the little girl, we look nothing alike, she and I. Indeed, now that I am private to her mother's treasury, I suspect her father may be another man entirely. The little hairs on her head are purely golden, and everything from her eyes to her lips is nothing but a bitter replica of that woman's features. She even has the self-same twinkling, uncaring laugh, as if the world could never touch her, nor dare to make her cry. The very thought irritates me to no end. I cannot bear the sight of her. An unending reminder of the future that was stolen from me. Thus, I am resolved. 
I will take the girl to the city and leave her in the hands of the orphanage there. A less cruel fate, no doubt, than to remain forever in prison with an unloving father. In the end, I know I could never truly amount to anything more for her. Oh my god. Oh man, so Sena's father didn't really love her. At least, not at this point, at that point where he wrote this letter. Maybe he loved her towards the end since he didn't brought her to the orphanage. Whew. As Esther's eyes drifted across the page's last words, she felt a strange, uncomfortable sense of guilt in her chest. The girl he was talking about, he had to have meant Sena. Did he really feel so bitterly towards her? Obviously, Isaiah hadn't taken his daughter to an orphanage, but his resentment of her sounded deep-rooted. It felt invasive and overly intimate to be reading his private thoughts, but did she? But did she really have much choice if there was any chance Isaiah's writings hinted at a cure? She had to go through everything, including his journals, in case he mentioned any important research. Otherwise, there was a very good chance she'll miss something. Tucking the journal page away, she hastily pushed the book back into its shelf. Now, she was even more glad that she had decided to do search alone. Oh my gosh. Some parts of the past were better off remaining buried, it seemed. Oh my gosh, imagine if oh, if your father passed and you read an entry like that. Attempting to banish the journal page from her mind, Esther combed through a few stacks of papers and books lying around the study, scanning through them in an attempt to glean any useful information. But her exhaustion from the day's work, along with the esoteric, erudite nature of Isaiah's research, made it increasingly difficult to concentrate. Perhaps she was better off returning the next day, when presumably she'll have more energy to scan over things. Dinner time? Leaving the study with a faint sense of disappointment, Esther made her way down to the kitchen, where she could hear Sena working happily away. Oh! She had prepared a rich, hearty vegetable stew for their supper and a delicious pot of tea to accompany it. Oh, I feel so bad for both of them. Sena, because, um, I mean, naturally for Sena, because, like, Realized that the dad didn't love her or resented her to a certain extent. And, and Esther for finding out and being unable to say anything, you know. As night fell, they shared their meal at the little kitchen table, warmed by the nearby cozy hearth. Unlike their quiet lunch, Sina kept up a lively, mostly one-sided conversation all the while as if she suddenly thought of a hundred more things to say in Esther's absence. You know what? Sina will make a really good streamer, guys. <laughs> one-sided conversations? <laughs> a talent in one-sided conversations? Yeah. Great for streamers. Still, it felt so comfortable somehow. The normal pressures of acting sociable didn't seem to apply around Sena, who seemed content just to share Esther's presence, even if the older girl rarely spoke. A peace Esther had only felt before when she was alone. How unfamiliar it all was. Esther? Esther! Are you alright? Why did I get a weird accent at the end there? <laughs> After they finished washing the dishes and wandered back into the parlor, 
Sinan gave Esther a curious, slightly worried look. I think you could use some rest. You look really, really tired. You did work very hard today. She couldn't deny Sina's observation. It was becoming steadily more of a struggle keeping her eyes open and her muscles ache from so much unexpected use. You're yeah, right. I should sleep so I have the energy to go through the study more properly tomorrow. You should rest too, Sena. Yes, of course, we should be able to go through the chores more qu quickly tomorrow too, since you are an expert now. Well, I'll see you in the morning then, Esther. Sleep well. After pausing for a more short moment, she gave a playful little curtsy with a smile, to which Esther nodded in response. But as she, as she started to turn towards the stairs, Sena hesitated again, glancing back at Esther somewhat shyly. Um, um, Esther? <coughs> you probably aren't very comfortable, right? I mean, wearing your normal day clothes to sleep. The thought had barely crossed her mind, but Sena was right. Her travelling outfit wasn't exactly the most pleasant thing to rest in. I think you're too big for any of my clothes, but if you like, I could give you one of Papa's old shirts to wear at night. He was really tall, so it would be like a nightgown for you. <laughs> Only if it's no trouble. No, not at all! I just, if you're going to be staying here for a little while, it makes sense, doesn't it? You can't be wearing the same thing all the time. Ah, anyway, I'll be right back. Stay here just a moment. Taking off in what almost, what, taking off in what was mo almost a sprint, she bounded over to the stairs, vanishing up then the, the next moment. Esther barely had to wait a minute before she heard returning footsteps and spotted Sena fluttering through the foyer like a white rabbit. And here we are! She unfurled a huge black shirt from beneath her arm, flourishing it like a grand cape. Esther tentatively reached out for the shirt. Even though it was probably silly of her, she couldn't shake a sense of guilt agreeing to wear something that belonged to a person so recently deceased. Sena's father, no less. Well, you can go change in the kitchen if you like. I'll wait here. The same feeling didn't seem to bother Sena, who gave Esther an eager, nearly impatient smile. Alright. After a brief pause, she rel relented moving to retreat into the kitchen. It was quite chilly away from the fire, so Esther undressed quickly, goosebumps raising on her arms as soon as she unbuttoned her blouse. Once her clothes were hastily folded up beside her, she put the shirt over her head, immediately thankful for the loose warmth it provided. like a shirt dress. <laughs> Wait. Oops. Oh, I should save! Oh my god. Oh my god, thank goodness. Wait. Is there a... Let me guess. Oh no. Uh, What is it? Alternate? Control? Oh god. See? Let me check. Pref. No, I wanted to like hide the text, but I forgot. I forgot how to hide the text. I forgot. <laughs> she wandered back into the living room, hesitantly shifting her gaze over to Sena. The soft, loose fabric hung over Esther's frame like an oversized dress, her arms lost in the flowing sleeves. It smelled remarkably clean. Sena must have kept washing her father's clothes all these years. Oh my gosh. Ah, wow! It really suits you, Esther, just like a cozy nightgown. Sena guessed with delight, clasping her hands together and beaming brightly. 
you weren't lying about it being big. She raised one arm to study her dangling sleeve, feeling somewhat embarrassed about how ridiculous she must have looked. Still, she had to admit it, it was much cozier than her blouse and skirt. It also made Esther feel a little more at home, instead of a wanderer simply staying overnight. Thank you, Sena. I promise I'll take good care of it. Aw, oh, you don't need to be so formal, Esther. It's only just a shirt. But I'm happy. I'm happy you like it. Papa was always very practical, so I think you'll be glad to know his clothes were being put to good use again. A gentle smile crossed Sena's features, carrying a trace of both sadness and warm, warm affection. Well, now that you've got something nicer to sleep in, I suppose it's big time. Good night, Esther. Sleep well. Good night, Sena. Thank you again. When they parted ways and Sena's bedroom door had softly clicked shut upstairs, Esther lowered herself onto the couch once more. Is she gonna do that thing? It was the second night here, but already it was starting to feel like something of a pleasant routine. Pleasant. If not for what always had to preface her sleep. Oh dear. Reaching down for her, where her sash sachet still rested on the floor, Esther pulled out the small silver watch from before. Reluctantly but methodically, she flicked the switch and pushed the needle into her arm. Siphoning out her blood, before forcing the altered compound back into her vein. Around and around the hands spun, until they marked a full day's worth of hours. Oh, so it's like a timer for how long you have to like use your medicine. Ouch. The syringe slipped free from her skin, leaving only a few beads of deep red behind. It was difficult to describe the strange, sickly discomfort she felt during and after the process. At first, there was a modicum of relief, a pleasant buzz that distracted her from the injection. But within a few moments, it swiftly turned into a nauseating weight in the pit of her st stomach, a feeling like something alien and unwanted had begun circling in her bloodstream. Oh man. She had to keep doing it, for now. One day, she'll no longer be dependent on the loathsome thing. But she could only dream of when that day would finally come. Curling her legs up on the sofa, Esther huddled beneath her blankets. <gasps> blankets! She felt far more comfortable in Isaiah's uh, shirt, at least. Though it hardly mattered considering how deeply tired she was. Blanket! 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 Before long, the warmth of a well-deserved sleep began to drown out all her thoughts. The weight on her mind steadily cleared, fading into a mud muddy haze, until at last she was pulled into the timeless world of dreams. Are we dreaming? Are we dreaming? Maybe? Oh. Mm. How are there so many of these accursed things? Oh, is he the dad? Wiping the sweat from his brow with a forearm, the man sighed he heavily. He was only halfway through planting his potatoes, one of the staple crops he had planned. They were taking him much longer than expected, and it was far from an enjoyable process. Oh, it is! Oh wait, but it might not be that guy, right? Or could it be? I think it should be the same guy. Isaiah. 
with all the work I've put into this patch, I expected some damn fine produce to come out of it. <laughs> he announced shortly to the freshly tilled earth around him, which currently only offered a few sparse seedlings. Still, despite all his annoyance and grumbling, Isaiah couldn't deny the dissatisfaction he felt from surveying his work. Between the garden and the newly renovated manor, his old family grounds were becoming a beautiful independent refuge in the forest. At last, he would be free from the will of others, free from all the rules, structures and arbitrary games of society. It was well worth the price of being completely alone. <laughs> well, not entirely alone. Isaiah's gaze flickered towards the small figure seated in the sitting in the grass nearby, toying with flowers and giggling with wonder at the sky. This scene was one he had longed for so many times. Only in his dreams she was here too, laughing and holding their child the sunlight glittering on their matching hair. Without her, it seemed like nothing more than a sad joke. The caricature of a clueless father played for a fool by his beloved. Oh. And what a fool I am. He muttered bitterly to himself, tossing his shovel aside and rubbing a hand across his brow. Stuck with a child I've no clue how to care for. Out here gardening and laboring when I nothing but a witless academic who inadvertently slew all of his house plants by forgetting to water them. I for I've gotten myself into quite the mess this time, haven't I? His chest heaved with a long, tired sigh. Yeah, I'm the kind of forget to water too. That's why my plants died. As much as he tried to convince himself this was the right choice, that he'll be happier out here than in the city, a sense of doubt always came sipping, uh, creeping back to him. And like he had for so many years, the pale, icy grit still held him in its clutches. Earlier in the year, when he was cleaning and refurbishing the manor for his new family, Isaiah had barely felt the symptoms. A wealth of energy flowed through him, and all of his lethargy was washed away by tides of excitement. But now, he couldn't rouse himself from bed half the time, and the disease attacked him savagely when he least expected it. Oh, you know how they say a healthy mind can prevent illness? There's some... There's some that, I think there's some truth there. His tr last true hope for living, the only thing giving him the will to fight the pills onslaught was his search for a cure. Though he could feel that hope beginning to wane too. Papa? The man jerked his head towards the source of that tiny voice. He kept forgetting she was even there, playing among the flowers. But when he looked down at the child, he saw her tiny hand outstretched towards him. A little white blossom lay in the centre of her palm, offered up to him alongside a sunny, gilless smile. Aww. <sighs> Reluctantly, the man lowered down to one knee. With hesitant, uncertain fingers, he reached out to take her offering, holding it in his la much larger palm. <laughs> papa! Papa! The girl delightedly clapped her hands, breaking into a happy fit of giggles. Isaiah watched her for several long moments. I don't know why I feel so touched. And sad at the same time. <laughs> Isaiah watched her for several long moments, his face contorting slightly as if it wasn't fully sure what expression to make. What a silly girl. Like a damn bab babbling brook you are, silence is virtue. 
especially for children. Oh shit, he's a boomer, guys. Grumbling quietly, he shoved the white flower into his pocket, then reached out to pick up his shovel once more. There was still a great deal of plenty to be done. He had to take advantage of days like today, where he, when he had the strength to work properly. No time to be playing around with flowers, certainly. Hmm. Reading, reading for long periods of time can 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 wreck one's voice. <laughs> How do all the YouTubers do it? They must have hydrated really well. <clears throat> with that, he set about digging again, driving his shovel into the soft earth with vehement strikes. I might get a sweet later on. Like something minty for my throat. What a strange life he had created for himself. Strange, solitary, and most likely a very difficult one indeed. There was much he had to learn, and not simply for academic curiosity, but for his. for their survival. It was a heavy pressure, unforgiving and merciless as nature itself. Nor was he a young, fit man full of vigorous energy any longer, able to finish a hundred tasks in one day. But somehow, he couldn't imagine going back to how life was before. Even if he never became a skilled farmer, or a decent carpenter, or an adept tailor, at least he was forging his path with his own two hands. As long as he retained that endless freedom, cherished it, grew bolder in it, and one day, perhaps even pass it down to her, he could surely carry any weight on his shoulders along the way. Oh, wait. Oh, oh he wanted to pass on his freedom to Sena. Is that why maybe he pretended to have died? Cause he didn't want Sena to look after him. Oh, but Sena is still looking after some guy, right? Hmm. The plot thickens. Oh no, it's raining. Okay, I'm gonna get a sweet right now. BRB, check him time, your favorite streamer. <laughs> check him! <laughs> yeah. Fisherman's, fisherman's friend. Oh, honey lemon flavor. Honey lemon is like one of the nicer flavors. Some of the flavors are so intense and bitter. Mm -mm. How many can I eat? Mm. I'm gonna eat two. Hmm. 
while we have a short break. Guys, I set up my Elgato. Is your throat dry after all that reading? Yeah, it is. SP488, I might get. I might get. I might get McDonald's. <laughs> despite, despite, I just like the throat wrecking right now. <laughs> Mm, I I have some fish. I think I shouldn't have had like, I plopped I plopped two fisherman's friends uh lozenges, and it's now very cooling in my, it's a little bit too minty. <laughs> but guys, I set up my elgato so like I can shrink switch stuff, and I think I'll be moving my PSI into my room. So that I can make use of the Elgato as well through my PSI. And because I my second monitor uh, supports 4K, I can play on my second monitor and stream. I guess I'll still keep to 720p. Because I heard like some countries they have slower internet. So 720p is like their preferred uh uh what's that? What do you call that? Video output quality, yeah. Mm -mm. Oh yes, am I? I have a. I ordered this pretty big uh green screen. It's those like foldable kind, you know, like those car window um, those things you stick on car windows, uh, uh which can be folded. You like twist them and then you can fold them, and then you can untwist them and then they will like, bang, open. Uh, yeah, I almost died to my green screen. What the hell? <laughs> What the shit? <laughs> Guys, if y'all get a big green screen, you need to be careful when you open it. I almost died to it. It like, opened up so fast and it was like, really big. It's like 100, I think like one, the longer side is like 120 centimeter or something. It almost killed me. Actually not 100 centimeter, I'm pretty sure it's taller than me. So it's like, I don't know, 200 centimeter or something. My god. <laughs> And, and you know, I, I was struggling to close it back and I was like, ah, uh, I can't do this. I went to search the YouTube um to see how to how to fold it. But yeah, I might be using it to record uh do one of my animated emotes. So yes. <laughs> I might need to enlist the help of my sisters again to to to, to help me. Take a video for animated emotes. Mm -mm. Okay, I still have the switch, but I think I can still read. Not like, not like I won't stumble on my words, even if I don't eat any sweets. So, we will go on. Let me your water. So minty. Get cozy again. Ah. Ah, okay. A distant rumble stirred Esther from her sleep. Her hazy, half open eyes drifted towards the window where a dull sky greeted her with little morning light. Dark, heavy drops sluggishly cross down the glass, forming jagged patterns that soon dissolve into nothingness. Oh, she's still in her little pajamas, of course. The greyness. Is there no sound? Give me a moment. Wait. The greyness brought back her memories of the city. Dim cold dawns filtering through her bedroom window. Minutes spent staring out past the smoking chim chimneys into the industrial fog that always clouded her view. Oh god. She can see the air pollution. Wait, I have a feeling. 
Hold on, I'm gonna like reload my game. Sound from where? I can only hear you, yeah. Oh, you can hear it now. Okay, I'm gonna reload it. No, it seems like it's really quiet here. Yeah, it is quiet here, it's quiet here. Mornings where it felt like an immense struggle to will herself outward, to master the strength for starting a new day. She could hear her parents down below, their muffled voices greeting each other cheerfully over tea and breakfast. But as much as she clearly, dearly wanted to join them, the longer she lay there listening to their light chatter, the more she felt removed from them altogether. Oh, a sense of loneliness so deep that it grew complacent, resigned to the fact that she would never again rejoin the unafflicted world. And the more she dwelt on the sullen thought, the less Esther felt like she wanted to rejoin such a world at all. Wait, did I skip something? Until f oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Until finally, a restless sleep slowly would come to cover her in the darkness once more. Hmm. Hmm. I think my sleep. <laughs> Esther? Are you awake? Oh, yeah, there's music now. Her eyelids fluttered open again. When she jerked her head upwards. Welcome back, spiritual souls. Welcome back. What did I miss? They did chores. She found out. Um, We found out that Sena's father resented Sena. But I think like the father eventually came to love her. Cause Sena Sena was was uh was uh was born from uh his ex-wife. And yeah, they are probably not even blood related. Yeah, and he resented the ex-wife for leaving him. Aww. Oh yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we we re uh, Esther read a note about how how much she hated uh Sena, but I think from the flashback, I think we could we could tell that he eventually came to love her. But I mean, at at that point, I don't know if Sen I don't think Sena knows, so we'll see. When she jerked her head upwards, she saw Sena. Wait, did I say Sena? Yeah, she, Sena doesn't know. Uh, and then um, Esther We don't know what Esther would do I guess with that information Who's, Sometimes I, I, I scared Whatever I explain I mix up Esther and Sena <laughs> But we will continue hmm, Hopefully it clears up as we, as we goes on When she jerked her head outward She saw Sena standing beside the sofa Looking down at her rather timidly I'm so sorry if I woke you up. I just thought I'll make you some tea, so I was checking if I should put on a bigger pot for the two of us. Despite her light smile, something in Sena's tone seemed to carry a hint of worry. Almost om automatically, Esther slowly pushed herself into a sitting position. She barely realized it until her bare feet brushed the floor, sending a faint shiver up her spine. It's fine, I was already awake. Thank you, thank you for checking on me. Oh, of course. Sena looked relieved, nodding contentedly to Esther's words. Tea for two then, I'll go put on the kettle. Oh, and I thought we could stay inside today. I normally do on rainy days. <laughs> She's inspired! That's so cute! Coco pig! Coco me pig! Hello! I'm reading... I'm reading a vision novel for today. It's a chill Thursday night. How's your day, Shinspired? Thank you for tuning in to the stream. Thank you, thank you. We... We could go over Papa's books and research together, maybe? If I wouldn't bother you. Long weekend ahead! Yeah! Hell yeah! 
<laughs> Pog. <laughs> I'll be grateful for your help, Sina. There are so many books and papers, I barely know where to start. Yes, of course, I'll be happy to help. Ah, I'm so excited. She always says she's excited. Oh, but first things first, the tea. I'll go fix a pot that's perfect for a day like this. If you don't mind, could you start the fire and light a few candles, Esther? There's a tinderbox in the desk by the window. With that, she turned to hurry off into the kitchen. The soft pattering of her feet, footsteps buried beneath the drone of heavy rain. Again, in an unconscious movement, Esther found herself rising from her nest of blankets with little effort. It caught her off guard normally. Her illness left her all but catatonic on overcast days. Perhaps her self-consciousness around, around Sena was an even stronger force than her deep lethargy. Either way, it seems best not to question it. After changing into her day clothes and fishing out the tinderbox Sena mentioned, Esther knelt down to kindle the fireplace. As soon as it flickered to life, filling the room with a warm light and steady crackling, she felt like a spark of energy lit inside her too. So strange how only a small fire could make such a difference. When Sena returned, she proudly held a fine silver tray in her hands. Along with tea, she brought two bowls of gr 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 granola she freshly made. Wow, she makes granola. A deliciously comforting breakfast alongside their warm drinks. Oh yeah, granola is like grains and probably some plant stuff, right? <laughs> and berries? <laughs> They sat down on the sofa to munch together, watching the rain torrent down in sheets past the window pane. It was one of those heavy blanketing storms that made a person grateful to have shelter, nurturing some deep instinct to curl up inside and wait for the rain to pass. Sitting together for an unhurried meal, reassured by the warm fire and pattering rain jobs that all was safe, it was a simple pleasure, but the more she dealt on it, the more Esther found a calm, reassuring satisfaction in the moment. Thanks for the hydrate we did. How hydrate? Thank you, thank you. Mm -mm. Oh no, almost no more. Can you see? Can you see the water? After I ate the mint, the water tastes like... It, it feels cold. <laughs> There's a power of mint. <sighs> hmm? At one point, Sena giggled faintly, to which Esther gave her a puzzled glance. You were making a really cute, charming face just now. Like a little cat. After you just finished a saucer of cream. <laughs> Is she pouting? Esther hastily raised her mug and took a long sip of tea, tea, taking refuge behind the painted ceramic. Oh, I'm not teasing you. I, I know I made funny faces too. It just makes me happy to see you like that since when you first arrived. You look so hollow. Hello? Sena nodded, lowering her gaze to where she grasped her warm mug in both hands. Yes, hollow. Like bleach, bankai. Like you didn't have anything left, I suppose. From her suddenly reluctant, almost wary reply, it almost seemed as if she was familiar with such a look. She could have been imagining things, but Esther thought she saw Sena shudder faintly, drawing closer to the fireplace. Well, since we're both finished, I think I'll go wash up. She probably sees a lot of her father in 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 Esther. Sena, Sena probably sees a lot of her father in Esther. She hopped up to her feet, 
stacking their bows together atop the tree. Alright, I'll go upstairs and look for some books to bring down. Oh yes, you can light up the candles if you want, since it's so dark. I'll meet you back here in a bit. With that, Sena swiveled to make her way towards the kitchen, her tray rattling softly. Her retreat seemed a little hastier than normal. Esther had the sense she was still bothered by something, perhaps the comment she had made earlier about looking hollow. Despite her warm friendliness, Sena had a certain guarded side to her, a private shield and degree of separation that Esther hadn't expected. It might fade eventually if they grew to know each other better, but right now, Esther felt like Sena was almost keeping her at arm's length, in a strange way. Huh. After summoning the strength required to leave the warm, cozy fire, Esther forced herself out into the hallway and up the creaky stairs. But when she stepped into the study, just like before, Esther felt an oppressive, bleak atmosphere pressing down around her. In her haste to light the candles, she nearly tripped over her own two feet. Oh, be careful. Be careful with fire, guys! Their glow didn't wholly alleviate the green darkness, but it was enough to bring Esther a, re a little relief. Why did this room bother her so much? By all accounts, it simply looked like a normal study, albeit a messy one. There was nothing that should have set her on edge. Exhaling a long sigh, she inwardly mocked herself for her cowardice. She was here to find a cure, not to get caught in her silly fear of shadows. But the more she glanced around the small library, with its overflowing shelves and piles of scattered books and papers, the more daunting her task felt. The only real trail of research that Isaiah left were his scattered writings. Uncovering his studies would have been far easier if they were bound together, not written on individual scraps of parchment. However, Isaiah went through phases of studying different subjects. Perhaps the journal pages stuffed into similar books would be from roughly the same period of his life. With that hope in mind, Esther returned to the spot she found the previous journal entry, scouring intensely over the row of dusty tombs. Oh, I just remembered. In visual novels, right, sometimes you get choices. But, um, not for this one, it seems, so far. <laughs> oh, oh, I cannot remember if there's a genre for this kind. Kin uh, kinetic? No, kinetic, it just means it's moving, huh? It didn't take long for her to spot another piece of parchment, this one tucked inside a small leather book. Eagerly pulling it from the shelf, she let the tome fall open in her palms, revealing a short page scribbled in Isaiah's hand. <gasps> what are we about to find out? She baffles me, that little girl, always laughing. Always cheerful, always smiling and patient with me, even when I raise my voice at her. I've only seen her cry once. It happened when I brought her outside this morning, preparing to bring her to the city's orphanage. As if she somehow knew our destination, the girl instantly began to bawl and scream, a dreadful sound that I should hope never to hear again. So dreadful in fact that I could not stomach the thought of hearing it for hours, so I was forced to cancel my trip. I suppose I'll keep her here for now. When she gets older, she may be useful at cleaning and tending the land with me, at least. With any luck, she will have inherited my work at, at it instead of her mother's. Isaiah had mentioned taking Sena to an orphanage in the last journal she had read. The two entries must have been written very close together. Her hunch was right. 
The discovery made her heart leap with excitement, even though it was only a small revelation. But it should piece together Isaiah's path of study chronologically, as well as his inner thoughts. She might have a chance at figuring out his approach to a cure. Hmm. A small note suddenly fluttered out from the back of the book, startling Esther. She bent down to grab it, her eyes drifting over the scribbled writing. Reminder, finish reading and annotating the la latest tune on spirits. Any relation to the pill still seems unlikely, but if all my alchemi alchemical and biological studies have been fruitless, what have I to lose? Oh no. She turned the book over to glance at its cover and spine, but there was no name to be seen. However, when she opened it to its first page, a large title stretched across the parchment in short letters. Samevath A treatise on spirits of shadow. Spirits of shadow. For some reason, as she murmured part of the title aloud to herself, Esther felt a faint chill crawling up her spine. It was only a book on superstition and unfounded claims, surely. But if Isaiah had singled it out, maybe it was still worth scanning through. Wasting not a minute further, she scooped out some of the surroundings books and loose surrounding books and loose papers on the shelf, cradling them carefully in her in her arms. But before she left, she had to quickly blow out all the candles. And once the gloomy darkness returned, it seemed very deeper, even deeper than before. What if Isaiah is like hiding? Once she, she had descended the stairs and returned to the warmly lit parlor, Esther exhaled a quiet sigh of relief. Sena was already waiting on the sofa, huddled up beneath a large fluffy red blanket. Hello Esther, welcome back! Ah, look at all those books here. I'll help you. She spun off the cushions eagerly, as if Esther's return was a welcome relief for her too. Together, they stack up the books and papers at one end of the sofa, forming a rather intimidating pile. Sena, however, didn't seem faced in the slightest by the Tower of Tats, and bent down to examine the titles curiously. Hmm... Natural science, astronomy, alchemy. I don't think I've ever seen any of these before. Ah, wait. This book. I remember this one. Sena reached for the same book Esther had picked up first. The book on spirits. Yes, Papa was always reading this book and scribbling notes. I asked him about it again and again, but he never told, about, told me why he was so obsessed with it. I guess he thought it would frighten me too much. With a soft sigh, she sank back down onto the sofa, still holding the book with a certain reverence. When Esther settled in beside her, Sena reached out to drape the blankets around the other girl's shoulders. Aww. Thank you. It's cozy. Isn't it? Reading is a lot better when you're wrapped in a blanket. <gasps> yes, it is. Reading is a lot better when you're in a blanket. Well then, let's see what Papa was fussing over so much. Are you ready? <gasps> CG! CG! In Vision Novels, um, uh, we call, we call like this kind of like artwork, I guess like a, like a scene. We call them CGs, which are cine... I guess it's cinematic graphics. Yeah. But I'll save here, just in case. The art is so soft, the way they, they, they color the characters. <gasps> oh, they're sharing the blanket, so cute. Holding the book up so that Esther could see the pages, Sina began to read aloud. Like me. Focusing on the pages her father had scribbled on the most. Before long, both of them were equally transfixed. 
in a strange blend of psychology, philosophy, and the supernatural, the art. The author described how different spirits affected one's body and mind in different ways. The term spirits didn't refer solely to departed souls, but rather certain essences of the universe that manifested in concentrated forms. Some could be channeled for purposes like healing, luck, or creative inspiration, but most couldn't be controlled by humans. They would simply pass through the body of their own. Body of their own, they will simply pass through the body of their own accord, or as dictated by other factors in the environment. However, as fascinating, fascinating as it was to consider, Esther listened with a skeptical detachment, with no proof beyond his own research and anecdotal evidence. The author's claims could hardly rival any real scientific study. And more importantly, Esther couldn't see any real relation to the pill, at least not in a way that could help her find a cure. Just as she was about to suggest they try a different book, Sina turned to a new chapter. It only lasted a single page, and the page after it was completely blank. A short warning on the study of the Arab fell. When her eyes roamed across the title, a small shiver ran through her body, just like it had earlier. Ah, such a short chapter. That's interesting, don't you think? This author likes using far too many words, so he really must have run out of ideas for this one. <laughs> After a small giggle to herself, Sina cleared her throat before starting to read once more. Through the realm of spirits is infinitely diverse. All those noted thus far have one thing in common: their energy is ephemeral, and they will rarely affect a body for extended periods. However, there is one type of spirit that will not only invade but overtake a human soul whenever they are given the chance. They are known as a, a Raphael, shades that lie completely beyond the realm of mortal understanding. I shall not write in detail of them here, for it is said that dwelling on the Arafel will often draw them to one's presence, and thus few have dared to document them. Once their attention is garnered, they will lure in their unsuspecting target without remorse, or more precisely, the target will be drawn to them inescapably, without reali- realizing or understanding their own actions. My sole warning then is to avoid any study or investigation of these spirits. Do not trifle with the darker workings of nature, no matter how alluring their call may be. Some aspects of the unseen world are re- are meant to be remain untouched. Ah, I wish I did that sentence better. Some aspects of the unseen world are meant to remain untouched. After she finished reading, the parlor grew chillingly silent. For a moment, it felt as if the fire's warmth had vanished, and the only thing staving off the cold air was Sina's small fa- form huddling across against Esther. Neither of them immediately spoke. Both of their gazes were still drawn to the single page, lying open beside its empty but bone-white twin. Unlike most of the other chapters, where Isaiah had lined the margins with his scribbled comments, this chapter was completely devoid of any such notes. The only mark he had left was a dark bold outline beneath the first mention of Arafel. The thick ink blot beside it suggested his pen had lingered there for a lot for a time. Either he had been deliberating about writing more, or else he had simply gotten lost in thought. Dear Raphael, it's a pretty name, but the way he describes them is really eerie. Sina finally broke the silence, her hesitant voice barely above a whisper. What do you suppose it means, Esther? Could they have something to do with the pill? 
She offered no reply for a long time. A murky, uncertain feeling shifted briefly at the back of her mind. Before she pushed it away, annoyed at her own bothersome insecurities, I don't believe in whatever he's talking about. Even if spirits like that existed, there's no reason why they'll be related to the pale. It's a disease of the body. You ease the symptoms with a tonic, not with a priest warding off spirits. The more she voiced her thoughts aloud, the more firmly Esther believed them. The law of superstition had only tempted her in a moment of weakness, in her impatience to find a cure. But I'll still keep looking for Isaiah's notes on them. His research on spirits might have led him somewhere else important. Ah, yeah right, maybe maybe Papa found another lead. Something more, um, sturdy. It was easy to see doubt on her face. Did Sena really believe in such things? She was younger of course, but still far more intelligent and mature than most girls Esther knew. It wasn't simply a case of a naive child being afraid of ghosts. Why then would she give any credence to such far-fetched writings? Esther just couldn't understand it. Let's look through somewhere, something else. Ah, yes, let's. In the brief moment of awkwardness that followed, Sena cleared her throat a little nervously before pausing with a shy, slightly embarrassed smile. Ah, could I ask you a favour, Esther? I really like to read one of Papa's journal pages, but... Well, like I said yesterday, he always told me not to. She tore a few strands of hair around her finger, letting out a rueful laugh. There were lots of things he was ashamed he had, he had written, he said, but he didn't want to throw them away. He needed to remember what he had written and thought about so, so that he would never make the same mistakes again. I don't know what journals are ones he wouldn't want me reading, but maybe, maybe you could look one over quickly and see? Of course. After briefly hesitating, Esther nodded. She was, she was happy to do anything to repay Sena's many kindnesses, but after reading Isaiah's past journal entries, they seemed like they might be more painful for Sena than anything. Picking up a few bound pieces of parchment from the pile, Esther quickly scanned over the pages, searching for any mention of Sena that might upset the other girl if she read it. Fortunately though, the entry she picked up seemed unrelated to family matters. It looked more like a hastily, angrily scribbled rant, the penmanship even messier than Isaiah's normal writings. This one, shall I read it for us? Oh, yes please! Resting her chin on Esther's shoulder, she peered curiously at the frenzied scribbling. With a deep inhale, Esther slowly began to read Isaiah's words aloud. Earlier today, I was reflecting upon my departure from the academy's medical circle. At the time, it was such a difficult decision, such an agonizing farewell. Now, however, I look back upon those times with awe, wondering how on earth I ever survived in such a place. I was constantly dedicating research and experiments to different departments, and yet nearly every completed task would always return to me with some issue. The use of faulty tools, or sloppy documentation, contaminated materials, careless omission of important details, it exasperated me to no end. Even the purported finest of researchers with the most spotless of records always seemed to deliver a perfunctory performance. Then, whenever I would bring my unsatisfying results before the head, he acted as if he didn't care in the slightest. On occasion, he would echo my complaints with sympathetic tutin and a shake of his head, but in the end, I gathered he, I gathered he simply had no investment in the results. Much of the time, the head went so far as to defend their mistakes, 
only stopping at the edge of calling me an outright fool for caring as much as I did. Any problems I encountered were mine to resolve. Oof. Every issue would be solely mine to bear. Frustration brought me to the edge of breaking down over and over again, and only my then refusal to concede would pull me back from the brink. And certainly, perhaps, I am far too finical and needlessly o worried over the fine details. Despite my vanity, I realize I can be hopelessly stubborn at times. But is it such a crime to strive for the best performance one can achieve? To care so passionately for beautiful results, a delicate procedure, a loving attention to detail? Can I rightly be called mad? for my longing to make my envisioned perfection into reality? Or if not perfection, then its very closest sibling, a masterpiece of planning? No, I see now with lucid eyes, living that hive of mediocrity was a, truly a blessing in disguise. Whatever I can accomplish alone will no doubt be far smaller in scale than anything I could have done at the academy, this I realized. But in the end, to be truly pleased with one's work, it must be solely a product of one's own design. And somehow, it brings me an odd, unexpected comfort in these long days of solitary research and study. Knowing I shall have no one to blame but myself when I am dissatisfied. He's a solo worker. To Esther's surprise, as soon as she finished reading, Sina broke out into warm, delighted laughter. Ah! It just sounds so much like Papa. Little rants you always go on about over dinner. He always took himself and his work really impossibly seriously. Never ever slacking, always beating himself up over his mistakes. It brings back so many memories. Slowly, the bright, affectionate, smile on her face began to wane. She seemed to be struggling to keep herself cheery in the face of whatever she had remembered, but it appeared to be a losing battle. Sena, your father... Hesitating, Esther beat her lip. You don't have to answer, but could I ask what happened to him? I'm sorry. I shouldn't have asked. No, it's it's fine. Sena reached out, placing her small hand on Esther's arm reassuringly. In a way, the faint smile she wore seemed almost grateful, as if it was something she had wanted to talk about, but haven't been able to bring up. At first, I didn't realize he was gone. That morning I woke up and started the day like usual, making a meal for both of us. I put Papa's on a little tree and brought it upstairs, planning to leave it outside his door, tell him I love him, then go start my chores. But an involuntary shudder went through her, briefly interrupting her halting, quiet words. When I reached his study, I, I saw the door was open. For a moment, I was so happy. I thought he was finally recovering and he could come play with me and work outside again. But he wasn't in his study or anywhere in, his, in this manner or outside in the garden. It was like he just vanished into thin air. When I realized Papa had disappeared, I, I was so scared. For three days, all I did was search for him everywhere I could. I didn't return to the manor at all. I only ate some berries and roots, drank from the shrink, and slept on leaf beds. But I never found anything. Not a single trace. As she spoke in an ever fainter, trembling voice, her fingers curled tightly in the fabric of Esther's sleeve. It was evident from her slightly choked words that she was holding back tears as much as possible. Finally, I, I came back home. 
I didn't know what to do. It seemed like the end of everything. I thought I would die of starvation, or sickness, or from being all alone from, for the rest of my life. I didn't even have any tears left to cry. I stared at Papa's door for hours and hours, wondering if I'll wake up from a bad dream. The only time I moved was when I heard a rustle from outside, hoping and praying it was him, but it never was. When night came, I couldn't sleep. I hid under my blankets and listened to the floorboards creaking over and over. She swallowed. For a long, for a long few moments, Sina went silent, but it was clear she wasn't finished, so Esther remained quiet. Then, one night I was so exhausted that I couldn't stay awake anymore. I fell asleep, a deep sleep, the kind where it feels like you only just blink your eyes. And when I woke up, the sun was shining so brightly through my window. I felt, I can't explain it, but I felt like it was telling me to keep living. To keep Papa's memory alive by protecting all his hard work, the manor, the gardens, the cemetery, he did so much to make us happy here. And on his desk, when I was cleaning it, I found everything he had left for me. Special almanacs, maps and guidelines, and some gold coins in case of an emergency. It really made me believe he wanted me to go on without him. He didn't want me to give up. So I didn't. She finished with a numb, almost featureless expression. It stood in contrast to the optimistic nature of her words, as if she still didn't fully believe them. Damn, that he has heart. But maybe he'll be a, he'll come back. At first, Esther couldn't think of any possible reply, so she just gingerly curled her arm around Sena, giving her a small, comforting hug against her side. In response, the blonde girl rested her head on Esther's shoulder. She took a few shuddering breaths, squeezing her eyes shut for several moments, then reopening them with a long exhale. Sena. Her voice melted with the steady crackling of the fire, as low and gentle as possible. The question on the tip of her tongue. She didn't want to distress Sena further, but the story seemed so incomplete. She couldn't help it. She had no choice but to ask. Are you certain that your father has really passed on? Couldn't it be that he just went back to the city? Sena stared with the heavily leaded eyes at <laughs> Sena, Sena stared with heavily leaded eyes at the grey window pane, where the distant stormy storm st where the distant stormy sky still showed no signs of clearing. A long silence passed between them, but just as Esther began to wonder if Sena had heard her question, before he disappeared, pa Papa was... He was sick. I don't think he wanted to be alive anymore, even if he was afraid of death. I don't know how, but I just knew. I knew he was gone, so I stopped looking for him anymore. When I accepted it, I grieved for him for a long, long time. Until I could finally move on. With Sena's chips on her shoulder, Esther could feel the warmth of small droplets falling against her brows. Silently, she held the smaller girl close, listening to her breathing as it slowly grew less uneven. She couldn't say anything that would truly express the sorrow she felt for Sena. No platitudes or even words of comfort would do it any justice. There were some things that could only be shown through the warmth of her lasting heart. A reminder that someone else was there, understanding how much it hurt, even if they couldn't fully comprehend the way he felt. But in the end, 
it still never seen light enough. Finally, after what felt like a very long while, Sena slowly straightened up. I'm sorry, Esther. We were supposed to be going through Papa's boots and notes, weren't we? She gave a small sheepish laugh, brushing some of her hair behind one ear. But thank you for listening. I mean, it, it really helps. You don't have to thank me. When Esther shook her head somberly, Sena's smile actually brightened a little. The sadness in her eyes was still apparent, but it also seemed le slightly less heavy than before, in a way. Well, I'm going to thank you anyway. I suppose the better thanks would be going over more of the research together, wouldn't it? There's still a lot left in the piles. Only if you feel well enough to. Hmm, I do. Ah, let's go through this, shall we? Picking up another stock, uh, stock. <laughs> Picking up another stack of parchment, Sena laid the pages out on her lap, shuffling some of them over to Esther. At first, it felt a little awkward to start out working again after their talk, but the rustling of papers and rhythm of their murmured reading helped restore a comforting atmosphere. To their disappointment, however, they soon realized that none of the other papers were Isaiah's journals. Instead, they seemed to be his esoteric, incomprehensible notes taken from various books, scientific theories mixed in with long ramblings on the supernatural. At one point, the fire's warmth combined with the coziness of their slow-paced, uh, quiet reading started lulling both girls to sleep. Without ever realizing it, they ended up slump slumping at opposite ends of the sofa, dozing off peacefully. When they awoke an hour or so later, they were equally hungry. Lunch had been forgotten in the midst of their engrossed work. But Esther was more than happy to help Sena in the kitchen. And together, they cooked up a well-deserved meal of savoury porridge with roasted vegetables. Ah, oh, that sounds good now. The two girls ate together, mostly in contemplative silence, their thoughts preoccupied by Isaiah's books and writings. Delving into his journals had left a heavy, uncertain weight in the air, alongside the guilt and morbid fascination of uncovering dead secrets. Esther had no idea if Isaiah would have wanted his writings to be examined by a stranger. One, one who was mainly searching in her own self-interest, that is. But Sena surely knew him better than anyone else. And she, she seemed just as eager as Esther to explore what her father left behind. It appeased a little bit of Esther's guilt. Although she still had the sense of treading somewhere private, intruding on intimate thoughts that were only written down in an attempt to lighten their burden. It appears a little bit of Esther's guilt, although she still had the sense of treading somewhere private. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I don't understand that sentence again. <laughs> After their meal, they returned to comb through more of Isaiah's research. But again, they met with little success. There was one thing of interest, however. In some of the books and scattered notes on spirits, Esther noticed an unsettling trend. Papers, eh, torn papers and large black outlines. It almost seemed like Isaiah had hunted down specific passages and attempted to erase them, but in an erratic, frenzied manner that, that went beyond even his normal messiness. In an eerie coincidence, she couldn't find anything other than men any she couldn't find any other mention of the Arafel. Perhaps it just happened 
Perhaps it just happened to be missing from the book she had brought down. Through an ominous sense in her gut, Miha wondered if that was really the case. Something strange had happened here, and the more Esther pondered it, the more she burned with a desire to explore Isaiah's unraveled mind. <gasps> Unravel, guys! Oh, she he tell you, she. Da 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 da. Ah, I'm sorry, Esther, but um, I don't think I can read another word tonight. Okay, after this, I'm also gonna call you a day. Once they call you a night. Surrender, surrendering, cause I I'm making more and more mistakes, guys. I think I'm getting tired. <laughs> surrendering to a long, exhausted yawn, Sina stretched her arms out over her head. I don't think I can either. It's not exactly light reading. You can say that again. My brain feels like it's jumbled up from all that fancy writing. They really use a hundred times more words than they have to, don't they? Maybe it makes them feel smart. Well, it makes me feel bored. They really need to think about their audience more. She puts on a playful pout, dangling her legs over the side of the couch. With a soft touch, her foot absentmindedly hit the side of Esther's sachet, which was still resting on the floor. Ah! Sorry, I, I knocked it over. Here, let me pick this up. You don't have to. It's fine, really. But Sina was already on her knees, scooping up the small trinkets and notes that had fallen from the pack. Is is this your watch, Esther? It's, it's very pretty. Picking up the silver timepiece from the ground, Sina turned it over in her hand, studying it with curiously shining eyes. All of a sudden, Esther found herself deeply uncomfortable. It's, it's not a normal watch. It holds my medicine. The watch part is only for tracking the time between the doses. The, the doses? What do you... Reaching down, Esther picked up the silver timepiece from Sina's outstretched palm. Then, with her thumb atop one of the buttons, she pushed until the metal relented with a short, sharp click. Sena's eyes widened when the watcher's back popped open, revealing the cruelly glittering needle hidden inside. The sight of it seemed to both repel and fascinate her, but most of all, concern well in her gaze as she glanced up at Esther. You inject yourself with that? Yes, every night. And what happens if you don't? My muscles will slowly grow numb, then give up altogether. At that point, I'll still be conscious, but it's only a matter of time before I will be comatose. It's possible to survive the paralysis for a short time, but if I don't quickly get another dose, my heart will stop. All the injection does is hold the thread at bay. You will always be there, no matter what. The fatigue of the pill is not really tiredness. It's a growing catatonia kept frozen in its earliest stage, before you lose the ability to move. She could hear her own calm, detached voice echoing in her ears, describing the effects the same the, the describing the effects the same clinical way she had so many times before. That's that's so horrible. It's terrible. I'm so sorry, Esther. After a moment, Esther gave her a small shrug. To her it was largely just another part of existence. A bodily need she had to deal with, like eating or sleeping. Of course, she longed to be rid of it, but after dealing with the pill for so long, she could barely remember what life felt like without its weight. We're going to find 
a cure for the pill, a way to set you free. I promise I'll help you, Esther. I'll do anything I can. I mean it. We'll find a cure some way or another. I know we will. As grateful as she, want, she was to hear Sena's firm, determined voice, uh, words, her inner doubts refused to leave. It was too easy to believe in empty reassurances. Oftentimes, they only made a later disappointment far worse than before. But she would never voice such thoughts to Sena. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Judging from how, how the smaller girl's features grew slightly crestfallen, Esther haven't hidden her lack of faith as well as she had thought. After a long moment though, Sena composed herself again. Well, we've done quite a lot today for being stuck inside, haven't we? Even though we nap, I'm still so tired. You should sleep then. I'm tired too. You're, prob you're probably right. I don't think I'll be of any more use reading these books tonight. At least the rain stopped. It should be a lovely fresh day tomorrow. I hope so anyway. Sena combed her fingers through her messy hair, letting out a sigh. Briefly, her gaze shifted over towards the watch still in Esther's hand. A flicker of worry and something almost like a frustration reflected in her eyes. I hope you can rest well, Esther. I'll see you in the morning, alright? Esther nodded. Her fingers folded over the cold metal in her palm, masking it somewhat self-consciously. Thank you for the help again. Good night. No need to thank me. It was fun reading together, really. Well then, good night. With a gentle wave, she turned to make her way back upstairs, like always. When she was gone, Esther pulled out her nightshirt and began to change, savouring the loose and cosy warmth her new makeshift pyjamas offered. She's already settled into a comfortable bedtime routine, and part of her enjoyed pulling out her bla heavy blankets each night, making a pleasant nest for herself. But somehow, when she finally sat back down and clicked open her watch, it seemed all the more difficult to bring its syringe to her arm. It wasn't as if she had a choice. The needle sank in, just like always. Bring a moment of relief before a wave of nausea crashed down onto her and washed away any sense of comfort. Pulling it back with a shudder, she closed the watch as quickly as possible. Then, all but diving beneath her blankets, Esther curled herself tightly into a ball. They sure like curling themselves into balls. Me too. We'll find a way, some way or another. I know we will. If only it, were, it was easier to believe those strong heartfelt words. If only she truly believed a cure existed at all. Got achievement, guardian. Okay, I'm gonna call it. Oh, I'm gonna call it a day here. I'm gonna save here. Whoa! Okay, <sighs> let me switch us to normal chat. Turn off. <gasps> oh no! I don't think we're halfway, guys. 
<laughs> I was looking at the gallery. We only have three CGs. So one way to gauge like uh one way to gauge like how close are you are to finishing uh to finishing the the the, the vision nova is by its number of CGs. Cause UJ they will space it apart pretty uh pretty uh evenly in a sense. Give me a moment now. Uh. Yeah, so uh we got three CGs, but there's four eight. There's ten. <laughs> well now. Maybe I need to read a little faster, maybe. But I'm enjoying myself so far. Okay, so I'm gonna quit this. And we can chit chat for a while before I call it a day. <gasps> Today seems like a good day to 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 get to get supper guys. Oh, it's so weird. Some of my some of my um audio is coming out from my speakers. <laughs> what? How is it, guys? I hope I hope I hope y'all um had a had a didn't get frustrated at my reading. I, <laughs> I know I keep making English mistakes. I'm sorry. I'll, but I guess this is my first like vision of a reading aloud stream, so wait, this one? This one? Oh oh I thought I heard my sister. You know what? I I think I, I think I did hear my sister. But yeah I, I hope it was a uh, still um a good stream and uh, sorry so far it's pretty interesting so I'm gonna continue it on during the next stream I don't know if we can finish it though I'm not too sure I'm thinking we cannot finish it but well we'll we'll just slowly make our way you know no rush yes but thank you thank you for all that are uh, that that has tuned in and listened and I I I wonder if there's anybody that listened and then like felt sleepy and then went to bed that would be a really like that would be an honor for people uh, uh, for 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 people who are reading stories I suppose <laughs> right if I'm reading a story and someone fell asleep wait or is it or is it not an honor hmm because it was a bit like a big a uh, big time like story time and yeah we're slowly we're slowly discovering things about Sena and Esther and more things about the pale and i think we'll see more flashback for isaiah uh Sena's father next so i wanna yeah i wanna s i'm curious why he left i have a feeling he wanted uh Sena to be free so he might have left but he didn't die yeah yeah that's what i think like he left out of fatherly love in a sense. Perhaps he hoped that um Sena would leave the 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 place and go to the city or something. But Sena didn't. Sena carried on living in the mansion and keeping everything in pristine condition. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh hold on. Huh? My sister's my sister was asking if I wanna get uh McDonald's. So after that I will be getting some. Yeah, but okay, thanks. Thanks for everyone that tuned in today. Ah honestly. Ooh, supper! Yes. I'll say I could use a uh, supper and then, and then a good night rest. This week has been like the first week of work from office. So it was a little bit tiring, not gonna lie. Oh, let me set the properties to show messages. Okay. Ah, uh, so yeah. But luckily, this week was a shorter week because we had tomorrow off because tomorrow's 
Good Friday It's a public holiday So that's good for us Yay yeah, Long weekend I might do I'll see how Because I might actually do like a uh, impromptu stream tomorrow at the same time but we'll see we'll see or maybe i'll just end up like watching like videos and resting and i see you work on like uh clips and stuff and stuff oh i click i click i click my i click uh something about uh ghost wire so you can if you are following me on tiktok yeah i'm trying to post uh clips more often maybe like at least like once every week or something yeah and yeah yeah mm -hmm. yes yes uh i don't know if i'll ever be have the energy to make video edits of like or some stream uh but uh, okay one thing at a time we'll settle this first oh and i need to i need to set up my ps5 to 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 link it to my elgato so many things to do <laughs> The other day Nisha Pusha was uh, actually it was yesterday. Yesterday Nisha Pusha was like uh, messaging me. Then he was like, "Are you? Uh, what are you doing tonight?" Then I was like, "Oh yeah, I I'm not streaming tonight, but um, I'll be looking into the donations thing." Oh yeah, I wonder if my donations tab is. Uh, oh yeah, I have a donation tab, but I removed the link because um. um <laughs> I I was checking with um I want to check with Streamlabs whether uh I can I can unmerge uh, one of my account because right now my my Twitch account is somehow linked to my YouTube to one of my YouTube account and that YouTube account is set as the primary account so I couldn't unlink it because it's like primary account so I'm kind of waiting on Streamlabs to get back to me but I guess we'll see we'll see. Uh, I was like watching some people I was watching some other like guys for streamers and they were like saying like oh donation is a wave of uh, interaction for the viewers so like so like you should always have it because at first I didn't want to like put it because I I didn't want uh I mean I didn't really want you guys to to, to donate I suppose in a sense Cause you can you can just watch me uh watch for free and just chill with me that's fine, but like yeah I mean but no but like if uh but I mean the the the, the guy he kind of makes sense cause like if it's a way to like interact so uh for bits right for bits right I my TTS is on for hundred bits and above. Uh, it'll be a guy that that reads the TTS but for donation I'll keep it as a girl. So I don't know if y'all ever want to mess Y'all prefer the girl voice Maybe y'all would prefer donations <laughs> And I guess some people rather Might have problem uh, Paying on Twitch maybe So like donation is another option for them Perhaps How to wait for NistaBeast to donate 10k Oh my goodness Does he donate 10k? My god, you need to win like literally like the lottery to get that. Better than bits? But bits give you like okay, if you get enough bits, I uh, guess a portion of subs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Understand the split. Like donation goes into my pockets more, I suppose. Like mostly. Probably I need to pay a bit to PayPal, but like mostly to to the streamer. But the for bits it it work. Uh, uh, wait, the, do bits? No subs are a portion, right? Subs are a portion, but bits is still mainly to me, right? I feel like I read that bits is still mainly to me. But for bits, if you get enough bits, you get a new emote. You get the poor fish emote. Let me show it off to you guys. This poor. <laughs> From what I know, bits need to have minimum to rejoin. Ah, uh, I guess I won't be rejoining. <laughs> I see, I see. Okay. Well, I need to go order supper because I think my sisters are waiting. So I'll be ending the stream. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. 
I know it's a very chill stream and there's less interaction so but I guess y'all can look more and do your own things while y'all listen I'm not too sure <laughs> I mm, do I prefer more interaction or that but I definitely did I did definitely want to try a vision nova uh, so so yeah experiment you know just experiment with the genres and we'll see we'll see but I must say whoa reading for like three hours oh my goodness <laughs> I can feel my voice is like uh, the HP bar is like decreasing. My voice meter is like need to recharge. <laughs> but yes, thank you, thank you, spiritual souls for chatting. Thank you, thank you, thank you all for watching. And if there's anybody watching from the bots or any lurkers right now, thank you, thank you for coming to the stream. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna call it a day here. Rest my throat. Eat McDonald's and not and kill my child. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I hope everybody have a good Thursday night and and I and sleep in. I'm gonna sleep. In. I'm so gonna sleep. In. I wanna sleep without being interrupted by the damn alarm clock. Rest ya. Enjoy some Thank you. Thank you. I will. I will. Bye bye. Good night. Thank you, thank you so much for coming today. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. Thank you, thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Thank you for talking to me. Thank you, thank you. Bye.